Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the seventh episode of the story, in which Naruto discovers a bracelet that allows him to wield the weapons and gear of legendary heroes while looking at the Forbidden Scroll. Naruto uses this power to become the ultimate ninja of the elemental nations. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Inside the blimp as it flew across the sky in direction of Dodo's castle hidden in the mountains, Koyuki sat on a sofa with her arms crossed and a frown on her face as she looked away from the cause of all her sorrows that her so-called uncle Dodo Kazahana. You've grown quite beautiful Koyuki, so tell me. Do you have the hex crystal with you? asked Dodo. Dot yes, Koyuki replied with her eyes closed, not wanting to look at him. Good.it is the sole remaining link to the Kazahana clan, and the key to opening its treasure, that caught the princess's attention, a key to what? When I dot wrested this land from your father's hands, the Kazahana clan's resources were all but gone. I knew Sosetsu must have hidden his riches somewhere, I searched for a long time and finally I found it. It is hidden deep within the Rainbow Glacier, there's a keyhole there which can only be opened by the Hex Crystal. Once I have possession of the Kazahana fortune, our country can obtain military superiority over the five great nations. Unknown to them, outside the blimp was Naruto latching onto it with his chakra. He had placed a special seal tag on the blimp and placed his ear on it which enabled him to listen in on whatever is been said inside clearly and right now he's frowning upon what he's hearing so far. This guy has got to be the dumbest ever. He has no idea of how strong any of the shinobi villages are and yet he wants to face them head on. That will put the lives of many people living in the land of snow in great danger, thought Naruto before continuing to eavesdrop on the conversation. Doto hand his hand out, now then, I'll take the hex crystal if you don't mind, Koyuki hesitated but eventually took off the necklace and handed it over to him who received it gleefully, finally. Hmm? What is this? Further examination of the crystal caused Doto to frown before grabbing Koyuki by the collar and glaring at her, this isn't a game. Do you think that I don't know that this is a fake? Koyuki was surprised upon hearing this, no, that's impossible, she suddenly had an epiphany of how she got a fake crystal, Kakashi Hataki, what? Nadar spoke up, it makes sense, Kakashi is a shrewd one so I won't put it past him to pull a bait and switch, don't even worry about it, we'll have him rounded up in no time, said Fubuki confidently. That won't be necessary, why even bother? The man will show up on his own soon enough. Until then, we'll just have to wait. Have the guards put her in prison under the mansion when we arrive, Dodo chuckled darkly as he crushed the fake hex crystal in his hand. Dud I guess that's enough intel, better report back to the boss, Naruto ripped off the seal tag before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Meanwhile, high above the blimp over a cloud bank was Naruto seated on one of his flying summons Aquilamon, he felt the memories of his shadow clone which he had sent and frowned as he went through it. So he was after the crystal to acquire some sort of treasure in order to go up against the hidden villages. What an idiot, indeed, his arrogance has blinded him to the fact that these villages possess great military power that could destroy him entirely, said Karama with a frown. But Kakashini I having the real crystal makes things a lot easier, I better inform him and the others of what's happening in the meantime and come up with a plan. Chinamazon, I'll need a connection to Kakashini, as you wish Naratosama. Connection established, said Chinami. Kakashini I, can you hear me? asked Naruto. It took a few moments before Kakashi's voice was heard in his mind, Naruto, is that you? Yeah, I'm contacting you through the ring which you're wearing, where are you right now? Aquilamon and I are currently following Dodo's blimp to his mansion, I had a shadow clone listen in on a conservation. It turns out that. Naruto then told him about the hex crystal and supposed hidden treasure. As I thought, I had a hunch that the crystal was what he was after, said Kakashi, I'll need you to sneak into the mansion and free the princess from prison while the team and I will storm the place and serve as a distraction before rendezvousing at a certain point, understood, I'll meet you later with the Koyukachin then, Naruto ended the connection before speaking out to Aquilamon, have we arrived at our destination yet? Yes we have, I saw the blimp land a few minutes ago, 
said Aquilaman. Then take us in low but don't let them see us, there are sure to be sentries, said Naruto. Understood, Aquilaman dove through the cloud bank, beneath them was a massive black mansion made of metal and pipes which was built in between tall snowy mountains with ice fog surrounding the area. Naruto took out a pair of binoculars from his pouch and proceeded to scope out the building, he caught sight of a few guards but he saw one of them positioned on the rooftop, giving him an idea of infiltration. I'll be dropping off from here Aquilaman, said Naruto, returning the binoculars to the pouch. Very well Naruto, I wish you good luck, with a nod of affirmation, Naruto jumped off Aquilaman's back with his arms and legs spread out as he performed the falcon dive taught to him by his sensei Ryu Hayabusa. As he glided close to the unsuspecting guard, Naruto unsealed the Mumei no Tamanu as he sharply unsheathed it right before grabbing the guard's head and behind him with a flip before stabbing him with the blade and wrenching it out to dismember. He flicked the blood of the blade and sheathed before sealing it away. Time for a stealthy infiltration, Naruto focused on the bracelet and called out, Honor among thieves, in a flash of light, he was holding the Cooper cane in his hand. He went through the door nearby and was quietly traversing through the numerous hallways of the mansion. He stopped upon a junction where he heard footsteps that were becoming louder, meaning that someone was approaching where he was. Thinking fast, Naruto leaned against the wall and whispered out, Shadow Power, then his entire body turned completely invisible. A snow ninja appeared and looked around but was unable to see Naruto before continuing on his way, that's when Naruto became visible before quietly sneaking up to the guard. He swung the Cooper cane to knock the snow ninja into the air before hooking him with the cane and slamming him hard into the ground, knocking him out. Naruto tied the ninja up with wires and placed him somewhere unnoticeable before continuing on his way. You'll need to continue downwards Narakan, it must be where the prisons are, said Kurama. That means something like a staircase or an elevator, I better keep an eye out for one, thought Naruto. It took him a while but he managed to find one, but the problem was that there were two snow ninjas guarding it, need a way to draw at least one of them away that that's it. Naruto performed a hand sign and was covered in smoke which dissipated to reveal him looking like one of the snow ninjas. He took a few steps back before running forward, making sure that he was heard as he appeared in their sights. What's going on? asked one of the guards. I detected strange movements through the hallways and currently investigating, it could be one of those Kanoha ninjas Osama informed us about, I might need some help in case of an ambush, said Naruto in a deep baritone voice. He figured that Dodo would have warned the guards of the rescue attempted and capitalized on it. You might be right, I'll join you while the other stays behind, said one of the guards before following Naruto down one of the hallways, I don't see anything yet. At that moment, Naruto turned around to grab the snow ninja by the shoulders and drove a knee into his gut, causing him to grasp it in pain, arg. What are you? He couldn't say any more as Naruto performed a quick somersault and used a heel drop kick on his head to drive him to the ground, knocking him out. Naruto tied him up in wires too before making his way back to the other whom seemed a bit confused upon seeing him alone. Hey where did the other one go? He asked confusedly. Naruto changed the tone of his voice to match the one whom he knocked out, it was a false alarm, turns out that he was rather paranoid, he walked over and stood next to him. I hear ya, but once Dato-sama acquires the Kazahana secret treasure. The land of snow will be unstoppable, then maybe he could start by fixing up the place, I've been seeing lots of cracks along the walls dot like that one over there, Naruto looked past the snow ninja and at the wall. What crack? The snow ninja turned, at that moment Naruto grabbed the back of his head and slammed his face into the wall hard enough for him to slump to the ground and lay there unmoving. Dot that crack, and it just got bigger. I'll go get the others down below to see what I mean since you're sleeping on the job. At the moment, Naruto entered the elevator and pressed a button before he felt the machine begin its descent to the bottom floor. Your humor is truly something to behold, Naratosama said Chinami amusedly. It's moments like these that a wisecrack is needed, thought Naruto. Well it was pretty funny, said Kurama with a giggle. 
The elevator had finally reached the bottom and the doors opened up, Naruto peeked his head out and looked around to make sure that the coast was clear before continuing on his way. He bypassed more guards with the shadow power and a technique called the stealth slide where he created blue spheres underneath his feet that allow him to slide around silently, he arrived at yet another elevator with no guards this time and boarded the car to go down again. He quickly took note of the many prison cells all around, shuddering a little upon the sight of the skeletal remains inside them, covered in ice. This must be the place, now to find Koyukichin, Naruto walked down and peeked through each of the cells until he finally found Koyuki sitting against the wall with her knees brought up to her stomach and her head down. He whispered out to her quietly, Hey, Koyukichin, said person raised her head to see who was calling her, her eyes widened in shock upon seeing who it was, Naruto? What are you doing here? How did you get here? For the first question, I obviously came to rescue you, and the second is that I summoned a bird-type Digimon to follow you," said Naruto with a quirked eyebrow, Koyuki blushed in embarrassment from asking such an obvious question. After sending away the Cooper cane, Naruto reached into his pouch and took out a lockpick and proceeded to work on the cell door, I've been meaning to ask you something, Koyuki-chan, Koyuki looked at the blonde in curiosity, about what? You said that there was no spring back when Garuramon and I found you. What do you mean by that? Dot my father used to tell me that I'll see when the spring comes, he often told me to imagine myself running in a field of beautiful flowers. He said that as long as I never gave up and continued to believe in the future, the spring is sure to come. But then my father got killed by Doto and I fled from the land of snow and because of that I stopped believing. I was always lying to people but mostly I was just lying to myself, my whole life has been nothing but a big charade, becoming an actress that was about the only thing I was good for. In the end all you can do is give up, said Koyuki looking down on the ground in depression. Naruto looked at Koyuki and let out a sigh, he seemed to have a knack for encountering people with past issues, I'm sure you know a bit of my past but back then, I was shunned by everyone and nobody even wanted to look at me and if they did dot then it would be with hatred. I often try to shrug it off like it didn't bother me but it didn't change the fact that it did and I always asked myself why am I here? I could or rather should have given up dot but the problem was that I didn't even know how to give up, so all I could do was move forward and thanks to that I was able to forge bonds with people whom became my greatest treasure. It was then I realized that by giving up, it also meant that I've given up on dreams that I could have achieved for myself as well as everyone else whom I care about, Koyuki looked at him in surprise at his story, but I, I have the feeling that your father refused to give in on his dream even in his death because he truly wished for you to see spring come to the land of snow, it just shows how much he loves you. Naruto smiled at her kindly. Click the door was finally unlocked and Naruto went inside and held out a hand to her, let's get you out of here, Koyuki looked thoughtful before she grabbed the hand and stood up with a smile on her face, they barely took a step when they heard a loud explosion and the place shook a bit. What was that? Koyuki looked around confusedly. Naruto smiled knowingly, it sounds like Kakashi and the others have finally arrived and are currently taking on the snow ninjas. We'll head back up and rendezvous with them, Naruto led Koyuki to the elevator which he used earlier. Doto was sitting within his throne room when a snow ninja entered and bowed before him and then spoke. Dato-sama, I come with news that we're under attack, said the snow ninja. The tyrant murmured to himself, hmm, Kakashi, you're here at last and right on time, elsewhere, the snow ninjas were running down the corridors of the large mansion before stopping before the source of their current situation which were a squad of Kanoha ninjas whom their master had warned them about. Looks like we got their attention, all we need to do now is take them out, Kakashi spoke rather lazily. Anko stepped forward with a smirk on her face, allow to take care of them while you continue up ahead, are you sure Anko? Yeah, besides I've been wanting to see which weapon I'll soon be using from the rings Narutakun gave to us, alright then, team let's go. Kakashi took off with the genins following after him. Where do you think you're going? Some of the snow ninjas were about to pursue them when a volley of kanai landed at their feet and turned to see that it was Anko who threw them. Don't bother yourselves with them, why don't you keep me company? Anko raised her hand to display the ring before calling out, Equip, 
the ring let out a bright flash of light before it faded to reveal her wielding a pair of blue-colored handguns with two more strapped to her heels just like back at the forest of death much to the shock of the grunts around, I've always wanted to use these cute toys again, now it's time to be naughty, she beckoned them to come to which they complied without hesitation, thinking that they could finish her off easily. How wrong? They were. Anko fly towards an opponent with and delivered a fiery jump kick. And kicked off with a backflip all the while rapidly firing bullets at any surrounding enemies with all four guns. She landed back on the ground and proceeded to kick and punch at any who charges at her, sometimes shooting her guns in the middle of a combo. One of the snow ninjas threw a kunai from behind, Anko sensed the incoming projectile and cartwheeled to right just in time. At that moment, a purple ripple of energy burst out from her body and she noticed that the grunts were moving extremely slow while she was a lot faster. Anko smirked upon realizing what this implies, she rushed forward with a shoulder charge to slam into a grunt and before using a snap kick at the head and shooting a hole through it as a finisher. Anko moved on to her next target by sliding across the ground with her left heel sticking out to kick, she made contact before performing a backflip to a standing position whilst knocking the grunt into the air with a shot. Now it's time for the climax. Anko stood in place before taking aim at the remaining grunts and launching powerful shots, all the while around like she was dancing. It was then that the temporal alteration finally wore and time went back to normal with a majority of the grunts laying on the floor dead with the remainder slowly backed away in fear. What just happened? She was suddenly moving at high speed all of a sudden, just what is she, one of them spoke in denial. Anko smiled slyly, that was quite rude to say that. If you need to learn how to talk to a lady, ask your mum. Till then, let's resume with this dance, then she charged forward and all the grunts could do is quail in fear. Elsewhere, Naruto and Koyuki had ascended to another floor with the use of an elevator and were crossing a bridge when a snow ninja grappled up to the platform. Better get out of our way, Shadow CLO, Naruto crossed his middle and index finger and was about to perform his signature jutsu when the snow ninja waved his arms in a placating manner. Wait, wait. Naruto, it's me. Snow ninja took off his uniform to reveal that it was Kakashi. Oh it's you, Kakashinii, yeah, had to get the grunts off our backs during our search for you. I'm glad to see that you're alright Koyukisama, yes, but you exchanged my hex crystal for a fake one without telling me, said Koyuki with a frown. Kakashi looked a bit sheepish as he walked up to them, sorry about that, but I had suspected that he was after it, and Naruto eavesdropping on your conversation with him confirmed it, he reached into his pouch and took out the hex crystal before handing it over to Koyuki. All for this little thing. Then they heard footsteps and turned to see Sakura, Fu and Sasuke running towards them. This whole place is crawling with guards, we need to leave, said Sasuke, Fu and Sakura tackled Naruto into a hug. Naruto-kun, we're so glad that you're alright, said Fu happily. We were worried about you, said Sakura. Thanks Sakurakan. Fuchan, Naruto hugged them back. Koyuki who was watching couldn't help but feel a bit jealous much to her confusion but shrugged it off and spoke up nonetheless, come on, this way, she took off down the bridge with Naruto and the others following close behind. Where's Ankaken? I don't see her here with us, asked Naruto as they ran. Let's just say she's having a time of her life and leave it at that, said Kakashi, Naruto got the idea and chose to remain quiet as they moved on. The group ran through a long corridor before entering a rather large dark room where they stopped at the center of it. Suddenly the room lit up with everyone looking around in confusion, then they turned to see a large staircase leading up to a platform where Dodo sat on his throne looking down at them before rising up with a dark chuckle. Dodo. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at the tyrant. Doto then spoke up, well done, Koyuki, everyone were shocked and turned towards Koyuki who ran towards Doto, confirming their fears. Wait. Kakashi attempted to go after her but Nadar and his team appeared to stand in his way, no, it can't be, why would she do that? She knows what Doto plans to do, said Fu in disbelief. 
I can't figure it out either, said Sakura. Koyuki handed over the hex crystal for real this time before turning to speak nonchalantly to the group. It shouldn't come as a surprise to you. After all, I am an actress, there you have it, another great performance from the great Yuki Fujikes, Doto spoke arrogantly. Naruto stared intently at Koyuki and noticed something in her eyes, it was regret and dot resignation? Why does she have those expressions? Why es dot it was all an act? Koyuki suddenly reached into her coat and took out a kunai before rushing at Doto and stabbing him in the chest much to the shock of everyone, I said it before, I am an actress. A kunai? But where did she get one? Unless, thought Naruto. She must have snatched one from your pouch when you weren't aware, said Kurama. Why you little wretched? Dodo grabbed her by the throat and began to squeeze tightly. Koyokichen. Naruto rushed forward to help her but Nadar intercepted with a kick but he slid under the attack and continued to run up the stairs. Mizor turned to aim his gauntlet at him and fired the retractable cable arm. Naruto heard the attack coming and created a shadow clone to which he grabbed and swung around for it to kick the arm away, then he threw the clone at as it performed the flying kick to knock Mazor back, don't you dare do it, don't throw your life away. Koyuki smiled sadly, I'm sorry, Naruto-kun, Tusan, she pushed both herself and Doto off to the ground below right when Naruto got close. Koyuki. Naruto-sama, please calm down. I can sense that she's still alive, said Chinami. Naruto let out a sigh of relief, oh thank goodness, he jumped off the platform and approached them but realized that something was off, why isn't Dodo bleeding and? Why aren't Nadar and the others doing anything? Naratosama, Dodo is, at that moment, he heard chuckling and to his surprise as well as everyone else's, Dodo got back to his feet with the kunai still stabbed in his chest and no signs of blood at all. Humph, you really thought that you could kill me dot with this little toy knife? Doto began to take off his robes to reveal a black armor with similar designs to the ones before but far more advanced with a set of gauntlets, that's right, it's chakra armor dot our latest prototype, he reached over and grabbed Koyuki, come Koyuki, let us be off dot beyond the rainbow, the ceiling suddenly collapsed as a grapple cable shot out from Doto's back and began to lift him upwards with Koyuki in tow. Where do you think you're going? Naruto shot out a kunai with a rope attached as it wound around Koyuki's arm and was lifted from the ground. Team we need to get out of here, said Kakashi. But what about Naruto, asked Sakura worriedly. I can assure you that he'll be fine, now move. The Kanoha ninjas ran out of the room with the Nadar and his team in pursuit. Outside in the air, Doto activated the backpack for it to open up for the wings to unfold in order to fly. He looked back to see the blonde ninja still hanging and smirked evilly. He aimed for the rope and cut it with a kunai, leaving the Kanoha ninja to plummet to the ground. Naruto. Koyuki called out to him worriedly. Ah, Kreya app. Naruto yelled out as he fell. Well that takes cares of that annoying bug. Dodo cackled before flowing towards his destination. Damn, damn, damn. I won't make it in time for a summoning jutsu. Naruto braced for impact as he fell towards the ground with his eyes closed. Then he felt something back the back of his jacket in a whoosh before being placed softly on the snowy floor. Are you okay, Naruto? A rather familiar called out. Naruto looked up to see that it was Garuramon who had caught him. Garuramon? I thought you returned to the summoning realm, I wanted to make sure that you and Koyukasan were okay when I saw you falling from the sky, he's quite the loyal friend, said Karama, appreciating the help greatly. Thanks for the save, but I need your help again. Doto is taking Koyukachan to the Rainbow Glacier and we need to go after them, said Naruto. Then what are we waiting for? Get on and let's go. Naruto quickly jumped onto Garuramon's and the duo raced towards the Rainbow Glacier to save Koyuki as well as take down Dodo once and for all. Meanwhile, Sasuke, Sakura and Fu were running through the forest whilst avoiding ice bombs which were thrown by Fubuki and Mizor who were flying and snowboarding respectively. You little genins should give up. 
Without that blonde brat here to help, you don't stand a chance against us, said Mazor arrogantly. If that's what you think, then you're sourly mistaken. Let's show you exactly what we mean, Sasuke held out his hand to show the ring on. His finger with Sakura and Fu doing the same before calling out at the same time. Equip. The rings all emitted a bright flash of light before it faded to reveal the trio wielding different weapons. Sasuke held an okatana with the handle being braided from black and white material, the guard is octagon-shaped as it was sheathed in a black scabbard made of lacquered wood with several metallic ornaments on its far end and a yellow cord at the opposite end. Sakura was equipped with a pair of yellow gauntlets which cover her hands and forearms, acting as arm guards. Lastly was Fu holding a large high-tech scythe whose frame is colored rose-red with black trims, with the blade shaped like a crescent. The group felt the knowledge of the weapons flow into their minds and knew how to use them before charging at their opponents. Music Start, Tekken 5, Dark Resurrection, Amnesia, Summoning a Weapon on Your Own Makes No Difference. Ice Style, Ice Prison. Fubuki landed on the ground whilst completing a series of hand signs before slamming palm on the ground to launch chunks of ice at the ground. Sasuke stepped forward and took an IAI stance with his hand on the handle, slash dimension, he drew out the katana and slashed at blinding speeds while blue pillars of light came out before and broke, destroying the chunks of ice completely before sheathing the blade with an audible click. Mizor rushed by a stunned Fubuki on his snowboard with the metal gauntlet with steam shooting out of it reared back for a powerful straight punch. Sakura was the next to move as she rushed towards the large snow ninja with a prepped punch of her own. Both clashed fists, however Sakura's gauntlet released a bright flash of light followed by an explosion which sent Mazor flying backwards before crashing into a pine tree. Sakura pointed the gauntlets behind and fired around for the recoil to launch her forward with another punch ready. Mazor saw the incoming attack and hastily moved out of the war right before Sakura hit the tree blowing the top clean off, it's my turn now. Fu rushed towards Fubuki and swung the scythe at her, however the snow kunoichi unfolded her wings and quickly took to the air, Komichan. I'm already on it, Fuchan. Chomei channeled her chakra throughout Fu's body as six beetle wings grew from her back as she took to the air in pursuit. Fu alternated between flight and tree hopping as she continued to slash at an elusive Fubuki. Ice style. Tsubame Blizzard. Fubuki waved a hand as a cluster of ice and bon in the shape of miniature swallows straight at Fu who hooked the scythe to a tree trunk and swung around to evade the ice projectiles but they turned around and aimed at her again. Fu transformed the scythe into a medium-length bolt-action rifle as a red magazine with the picture of a flame appeared in hand before she loaded and took aim, then she pulled the trigger to spew out red-hot flames that quickly reduced the ice into nothing but. Steam. I'm a bit greedy about those that get to fly, and you being a baddie gives me the opportunity to ground you. Fu took aim and fired a couple of rounds at Fubuki which pierced through the wings, impeding her flight. You little brat, it will take more than this to defeat us. Fubuki glared at Fu. Mizor was throwing punches one after another at Sakura but none of them made contact as she utilized the boxing style by bobbing and weaving around the attacks before countering with a hard jab to the face or a hook to the torso either of them with explosive impacts. He jumped backwards and launched the retractable cable arm at her. That won't work anymore. Sakura sharply brought a fist down on the arm, burying it deep into the ground then she rushed at Mizor, he attempted to retract the metallic arm but it was deeply embedded in the ground and won't come out. Sakura was soon upon him and unleashed a barrage of punches destroying the chakra armor bit by bit before rearing a fist backwards, Shanaru, a swinging blow directed upward at his chin with an explosive impact, knocking him high into the air. At the peak of his height, Mizor opened his eyes only to see Sasuke in the midair with a hand on the sheathed sword. Aerial Rave he sharply drew it out to slash consecutively before following up with a downward slice, sending both to the ground with Mizor crashing and Sasuke sheathing Yamato. He turned around to see Fubuki launched Ice Tiger towards him again. Yamato Combo C, 
he took a step forward before slicing at high speed that all one can see is a flurry of blades, annihilating the ice tiger. What's with their weapons and who made them? Fubuki was about to move when she was struck from behind, then she noticed that her body felt numb and couldn't move properly. She could barely turn her head only to see Fu flying towards with both feet in front which slammed into her gut, launching her away. That was mean of you to ignore me for someone else, said Fu. However as Fubuki flew in the air, she crashed into Mizor which caused a surge of purple energy with them screaming out in pain before a large explosion occurred much to the shock of the trio. Music end, what just happened, asked Sasuke. I don't know, but weren't their armor supposed to deflect chakra, asked Fu confusedly. True. Unless contact with each other somehow caused their armor to become unstable and that explosion happened, said Sakura. Well we better regroup with Anko Sensei and Kakusha Sensei, then find Naruto and the princess, Sasuke took off with Sakura and Fu in search of their teachers. Elsewhere, on top of a mountainous cliff, Kakashi was currently facing off against Nadar who was smirking rather arrogantly. Do you really think that you stand a chance against me? Maybe you should turn tail and run like last time, Kakashi, said Nadar. I don't really have much of a choice here, besides I want to try out the ring that my little Otuto gave to. Me. Kakashi held out his hand to show the ring before calling out, Equip, the ring shone brightly before to reveal Kakashi wielding a broadsword in size and appearance with a pointed tip although it has a short handle perpendicular to the main handle, giving one the impression of a tonfa. He also wears a metal gauntlet with a red core on his left arm as well as small devices attached to the heels of his ninja sandals, what is most notable is the long flowing scarf around his neck as it appears to be made entirely of crimson energy, I remember Naruto calling it the cipher blade, how lucky of me to get to use it, Nadar frowned a bit before performing a set of hand signs, like it would do anything, ice style, wolf fong avalanche, an avalanche started up from the mountain as the Falling snow transformed into a pack of wolf which rushed at Kakashi in an attempt to mutilate him. Explosive cipher, the color of the plasma scarf and cipher blade changed colored from crimson red to bright yellow with the edge wreathed in flames as Kakashi rushed forward slicing through each and every one of the ice wolves by igniting them in flames and melting away. Nadar was stunned at the sight, how did you? he hastily ducked under a swipe and jumped away to build some distance all the while weaving through a series of hand signs, ice style, dragon vs tiger. Ice from the surroundings gathered around to form to form a giant tiger before it pounced at its target. Kakashi ran forward with the cipher blade pointed behind with plasma energy quickly amassing, charged cipher, he dashed forwards and did a turning outward leaning slash with the reach of the blade having extended, hence slicing the ice tiger in half, cipher boomerang, then he threw the blade as it spun rapidly like a disc straight at Nadar. Like I'm going to let you hit me with that. Nadar leapt into the air to avoid the attack, but Kakashi appeared in the air before grabbing him with one hand. Then I just need to make sure that I do. Bun Shin, Ragnarok. Kakashi stretch out a hand to catch the cipher blade before he split into multiple afterimages as they proceeded to crisscross with back-to-back -back dashing strikes before finishing up by converging for a final cross. The now dead Nadar fell, hitting the snowy ground behind Kakashi as he landed, and I didn't need to use the Sharingan on you, now to find Naruto and Koyukiheim, where is it, where is the treasure? Doto and Koyuki had arrived over at Rainbow Glacier where six tall cliffs positioned in a hexagonal formation surrounded a miniature shrine at the center. Doto had inserted the hex crystal into the shrine and activated it, causing the cliffs to light up with energy much to his glee. But the strange thing was that hissing sounds were made, water ran from various areas, and the frozen ground began to melt. Koyuki was just as confused, it's so warm. What is this? A generator? Doto was outraged, this is the hidden treasure of the Kazahana clan? Koyuki. Everyone turned towards the voice only to see a familiar blonde riding atop a wolf-like beast towards them, it was none other than Naruto and Garuramon. Narutakun, Koyuki whispered out in joy. Music start, crush 4-0, 
live and learn Dodo growled in anger as he flipped through a set of hand signs, ice style, black dragon blizzard, he thrust his arm out to launch what appears to be an ether-like dragon with red eyes and mouth as it flew through the air towards Naruto. You're on, Naruto, said Garuraman. I know. Naruto jumped off his back and landed on the ground as he took a stance as a red rune with Siddha characters surrounded him and flames appeared on his hands, Ninpo, Art of the Inferno, then he put them together and thrust forwards as he shot a giant fireball that clashed with the black ice dragon resulting in a large cloud of steam. Where is that brat? I can't see anything. Doto tried to catch sight of the leaf ninja. Suddenly, Naruto shot out from the steam with a fist reared before thrusting it forwards to connect with Dodo's face, that was for the people of the land of snow. Gur. Dodo lashed out with a straight punch only for Naruto to dash to the left side and performed a high snap kick before ducking from a backhand to return to the front as he created a shadow clone. He went down on one knee for the clone to rush forwards while using the original's back as a springboard to perform a flying kick to the face. That was for Sandeu. Naruto continued the relentless assault as he rushed towards a recovered Doto who was back on his feet. Doto charged at Naruto with a first reared back, die you little brat, but Naruto went into the ground right before the tyrant formed a crater and reappeared behind him. Then he jumped over Doto, grabbing him by the head against his shoulders and performed a centrifugal flip to throw him several feet, shadow kick, he slid across the ground on one foot at a steady speed to connect a kick in Dodo's torso with the one leg all the while leaving a trail of green afterimages to send him flying further, that was for Koyuki's father. Dodo got up again to weave through a series of hand signs, I'm not done yet, ice style, twin dragon blizzard, this time he launched a pair of ether-like ice dragons at Naruto. Nice try, but let me show you a true draconic technique. Naruto took the stance again as the red rune with Siddha characters surrounded him and this time a vortex of flames swirled around his body, Ninpo, art of the true inferno, the flames engulfed him before taking on the form of a giant serpentine dragon. The flaming construct let out a roar flying towards the two black ice dragons which charged right back it. The flaming dragon swirled around the first ice dragon and clamped its jaws hard on the neck, instantly deflagrating it. The second dragon attempted to attack from behind to seize with teeth but the attack backfired due to the intense heat melting it. Away before the flame dragon enwrapped it tightly, finishing the remaining ice dragon off. The flame dragon descended to the ground before dissipating to reveal Naruto standing there with his arms crossed and glaring at Dodo, this ends here Dodo. From the start to the eventual finish of this fight, I'm always at a climax. Doto took a step back in fear, who is this boy? How can he be so strong? Naruto-kun, I believe in you. You're truly the strongest ninja I've ever met. Koyuki called out to him, he turned to give her a foxy grin. You heard the Lady Narakan, let's have a happy ending, said Kurama joyfully. No problem there. Naruto held out his hand as blue chakra swirled around it to form a spiraling sphere, Hisatsu. Or no Cho Hisatsu Waza, then he dashed towards Doto with the intent to end it all. By then Kakashi and the others have arrived at the Rainbow Glacier to see Naruto charge at Doto. As the sun rose over the mountains, the light reflecting from the mirror generators shone upon the Raisingan, causing it to take on the colors of a rainbow much to their surprise. Its rainbow chakra, just like in the Princess Gale movies, Sakura watched in wonder. It's actually real, said Fu excitedly. Dodo swung his fist at Naruto but the blonde dodged it at the very last second and moved in for the final blow. Rainbow version. Gaawa. Dodo screamed in agony as Naruto rammed the multicolored sphere into his chest, completely grinding through his chakra armor before it sent him flying a great distance until he smashed right into one of the mirror generators. Music and Naruto looked up to the sure dead tyrant and spoke, and that was for Koyukuchin, then Dodo fell to the ground. At that moment, all of the ice melting rapidly to reveal a lush grassland full of flowers and beautiful rivers and lakes. 
It's almost as if the land had just woken from a very long hibernation and removed its white blanket much to the surprise of everyone around including the bijou. Could this be, the director Makino who was on a snowmobile with his co-director and cameraman who recording everything suddenly had a twinkle in his eye again, were making this movie 3D dot and also HD. Believe in the future, if you do dot the spring will surely come, a voice suddenly spoke up and everyone turned to see a large hologram showing Koyuki as a little girl standing before them. That's me dot and that voice, Koyuki whispered out. What will you do when the time comes, Koyuki, asked the male voice. I'm going to become dot a princess, said child Koyuki. Oh? What sort of princess? Hmm let's see point one who's strong and who's kind and most of all point one who fights for justice, said child Koyuki who the unknown male laughing out loud. That's some dream, did I actually say those things? Koyuki asked herself. That you did, Koyuki-chan. And I gotta say that you were pretty cute back when you were younger, Naruto walked up to standing beside her with. Garuraman in tow and continued watching the hologram, his words caused Koyuki to blush at being called cute. Well so long as you believe in your dream and never give up, one day you'll be that princess, then a man with long black, wearing a pair of circular framed glasses and the robes of a daimyo walked towards child Koyuki and stood behind her as he tied the hex crystal around her neck before placing his hands on her shoulders and knelt beside her, you can see her, can't you? A beautiful princess standing right there in front of you, Tusan, Tears flowed down Koyuki's cheeks as her father smiled with warm and pride at the projector as if he was actually staring at her. She felt someone hold her hand and turned to see Naruto smiling with understanding, causing her to grip his hand tightly. A final message from a loving parent, this man truly cared for both his daughter and people, said Kurama. Indeed he did, Chinami spoke in agreement. But that I have sort of a problem, there's something else I want to be said child Koyuki. Really? What's that? asked the now revealed Sosetsu curiously. An actress. Child Koyuki looked at her father with excitement. What? Sotetsu was surprised for a moment before laughing in merriment. Now this is a happy ending worth fighting for, isn't it Koyuki-chan? asked Naruto smiling. Koyuki smiled that a true smile at Naruto, yes it is Naruto-kun, thanks to you and everyone else, Naruto, before the blonde could react, he got tackled to the ground by a pair of pink and green blurs which were Sakura and Fu respectively. Sakurakan, Fuchan, Naruto groaned in pain from the sudden tackle. I'm so glad you're alright, said Sakura. It was so cool that you defeated Doto with Rainbow Chakra just like in the movie, said Fu excitedly. Kakashi and Anko continued to watch the spectacle with amusement while Makino had the cameraman record the scene as a little extra. A week later, everyone in the Land of Snow had gathered at the palace not only to celebrate the downfall of Doto but also the return of their beloved princess as she stood before them as their new and rightful ruler of the land with Sandeu as her advisor. The people were just as grateful to the Kanoha ninjas who helped make it possible especially Naruto much to his awkwardness. At the moment Koyuki was with them at the banquet, having a conversation. Dot the heat generator wasn't fully developed in the end, said Koyuki. So you mean that it will return to being winter again? asked Fu. Not exactly, if we take the knowledge of what we know now and continue researching point one day this place will change from the land of snow to the land of spring, but it's kind of a bummer that you would stop acting now that you're a ruler, we always enjoyed your films, Sakura looked a bit sad, same going for Naruto and Fu. Who said anything about me retiring? Koyuki looked at them amusedly as they stood there looking confused ruling over the land and. Acting? I believe I can handle both, I know you can do it, Koyuki-chan. Just let us know if you need our help, said Naruto with a foxy grin. Thank you Naruto-kun, I will dot oh I almost forgot to give you something important. Koyuki had a look of realization. Really? What is it? Koyuki beckoned Naruto to come closer which he did, then she held his face in her hands and leaned forward to give a log deep kiss right on the lips. 
Naruto was shocked at what's happening but he leaned into the kiss much to Koyuki's joy. The reactions were quite interesting, Anko, Fu and Sakura were stunned but didn't get mad so much as they know her reasons for doing so being the same for why they too fell in love with the whiskered blonde. Kakashi did an eye smile but at the back of his mind was crying manly tears with a mental fist pump for how his little brother attracted a princess slash actress to boot. The people watching cheered at seeing their princess and hero having a romantic moment. Both kissers split apart with Naruto looking dazed and Koyuki smiling happily. I'm really glad I met you Naruto-kun, you helped me find the heart to believe again. And for that I thank you, said Koyuki. Naruto smiled back, you're welcome, Koyuki-chan, Sandei walked up to them with a smile on his face, we'll be sending an envoy to Konoha with an offer for an alliance, we hope to see you more often till then, of course you will, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Afterwards everyone resumed the celebration with a beautiful rainbow arcing over them. It's a normal in the Hidden Leaf Village, the civilians were going about their daily business while the shinobi have carried out the missions assigned to them by the Hokage. Apparently there are more people appearing in the village from other locations than in the past records, it's a given with the recent events from the sand-slash-sound invasion all the way to the newly forged alliance between the Hidden Leaf Village and the Land of Snow-slash-Spring. Business booms for the civilians and there are more mission requests from the daimyo. As of now there is a large crowd in front of Ichirakus and a majority of them are females, pestering Tuchi and Ayam with questions. Does Naratosama really eat here? Is he single? Do you know of his hobbies? What's his favorite ramen recipe? Do you know where he is right now? And the questions from these girls continue to come out until Ayam had enough and banged her ladle against her pan loudly to silence them. I'm sorry but we can't reveal any personal information on our village's shinobi as they're highly confidential unless given permission by the Hokage, said Ayam. Ah, oh, the girls slumped in disappointment and left the shop in depression. Tuchi let out a low whistle and chuckled in amusement, well isn't this something, Naruto had always wanted attention. Now that he got it in excess, he actually avoiding them now. But this is actually great for business, Ayam giggled in. Agreement, true, but Hinata and the others won't be so agreeable with the fan girls coming after him though, not to mention, that I can't eat my ramen in peace with them hounding me, a person in a black cloak walked into the shop and pulled back the hood slightly to reveal a familiar face to them. What can you expect and you end up taking part in a movie along with one of the most popular actresses in the Elemental Nations, and the said movie being a mega hit when it premiered on the cinemas, Naruto, said Tuchi. I never even knew that Makinosan, the film director would record more scenes than the first battle on that giant glacier, said the disguised Naruto. But that wasn't the only surprise now is it, they turned around to see Kakashi standing behind them with his book in hand as usual and a nice smile like what Princess Koyuki offered to you. Naruto blushed heavily much to the curiosity of Ayam and Tuchi. What did the princess offer to you, Naruto-kun, asked Ayam. Naruto hesitated for a moment before letting out a sigh of resignation and spoke, well it was when the team and I returned from the land of snow and had gone to make our report to Bachan, flashback, so that's what happened on your mission, said Tsunade as she read over the report in hand. Hi Hokajesima, Doto has been defeated and the rest of his forces were subdued as Princess Koyuki became ruler of the land of snow. She also wished to form an alliance with Kanoha and willing to provide the latest prototype of the chakra armor once its recent flaw has been examined carefully, said Kakashi. May I see the scroll for the alliance? asked Tsunade. Here you go Bachan, Koyokichun gave it to me though I wondered why she didn't give it to Kakashiniai or Ankakan. Naruto strode forward and brought out a scroll with a royal seal placed upon it. Koyokichun, since when was he so familiar with the princess, thought Tsunade, she broke the seal to open the scroll then proceeded to read through the contents carefully, she nodded in agreement of the conditions so far until her sights landed on a particular sentence which caused her eyes to widen with surprise and glanced at Naruto then the scroll several times with said person along with the others looking at her confusedly. Tsunadesima, is there something wrong with the conditions for the alliance? asked Shizun worriedly. 
Not exactly, depends on how you see it. It says here that one of the critical conditions for the alliance is a marriage contract between Princess Koyuki and her chosen suitor, said Tsunade, at this everyone looked at Naruto who hadn't noticed yet. Really? Who? asked Naruto. Who else? You Naruto. Seriously, nothing is ever simple with you involved, said Tsunade with a deep sigh. Naruto took a step back in surprise and a red tinge appeared his cheeks, Kakashi chuckled amusedly while Anko, Sakura and Fu giggled at Naruto's awkwardness. Me? Well three never thought sheesh. Wants to memory me, Naruto stammered almost as badly as Hinata. You can be so clueless at times Naruto-kun, Kurama shook her head in amusement. Well I'm not surprised, you stuck with her throughout most of the mission and even helped her out of her funk. Not to mention that we saw how much she likes you, said Sakura. Sakurikan's right, Koyuki used to be mean to others but after you saved her from Doto and hearing her father's words, she became much nicer even more towards you, said Fu. In other words, we're okay with the marriage and her joining the family, said Anko, she knew how much Naruto hated the word harem. But what about Hinataheim and the others? Naruto was still unsure of himself. No need to worry, Naruto-kun. We had long discussed that if any girl is to join, she should love you for who you are plus you have too big of a heart and would love us all equally, Anko walked up to Naruto and kissed him on the lips soon followed by Sakura and Fu, Chomei possessed her body for a few moments to kiss him too. You girls. Thank you, Naruto looked back at them feeling warm-hearted with what they said and swore then and there that he would always make them happy. He turned towards a smiling Tsunade and spoke up, Bachan, I'll accept the marriage contract, very well then, sign here. I've have an envoy deliver it to the land of snow, Tsunade held out the scroll for Naruto to sign his name on it before resealing, your mission payment will be deposited into your account, you're dismissed, flashback end dot and that's what happened, I even added a trans scroll to be sent to her so that we could keep in contact. I'm planning on modifying it to be able to feature visual communication, said Naruto. All I have to say is that you've certainly come a long way now Naruto, said Tuchi. You better treat them right, or you'll never eat ramen here, said Ayam with a glint in her eyes, causing Naruto to pale in fear, to never eat ramen is nothing more than a death sentence. Okay, I would like to order four takeaways of miso pork ramen to go, said Naruto. Why's that? You're actually talking to a shadow clone, Otuto didn't want to be bothered by those fangirls if they saw him, said Kakashi. In that case, give us a few minutes and we'll be done, Tuchi and Ayam got to cooking and were soon finished with them, here you go, thanks, the boss will be sure to see you later, by Kakashinii, said Sinaruto before he left en route to where the original is located. Over at the third ground, we find Naruto having spar with Zabuza while Haku and Hinata watched them from a distance. Zabuza wielded his Kubikure Bocho while for Naruto, he was wielding the long blade Mume Tamanu. Both swordsmen continued to clash blades, Naruto made use of his speed and athletic maneuvers to strike and evade, and for Zabuza who is using power and reflexes to block before retaliating with deceptively swift but strong strikes to fight back. Naruto skidded across the ground towards his opponent for a low slash at the legs, but Zabuza planted his Zanbatu on the ground to act as a shield so Naruto quickly shifted gear by rolling on the ground and planted his feet on the flat end of the blade and flipped up above his head and unleashed a barrage of slashes as he descended. Zabuza took out a kunai to deflect the incoming strikes with one hand while using the other to wrench the Kubikurabocho from the ground and swung it at Naruto for him to raise his blade to block and use the impact to build some distance away from his opponent. Both stood poised, ready to continue with the spar but then they put away their blades and bowed to each other in respect. That was quite the workout kid, sweated real good from that one and you keep improving with that crazy sword style of yours, said Zabuza. Thanks for the spar too, it's not every day that one gets to spar with one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, said Naruto as he returned Mume Tamanu back to its sheath. But thanks to that, I've gotten more used to dealing with guys using speed rather than power to attack me, 
Haku and Hinata walked up to them with towels in hand for both males to take and wipe the sweat off their faces. I have to say kid, nothing normal ever happens with you around. Engaged to a princess. Boy, will that be a bedtime story for when the kids are about to go to sleep? Zabuza was laughing to how Naruto blushed from his statement, Haku and Hinata giggled as well. Fu and Sakura explained to them what happened and even communicated with Koyuki on the trans scroll. Soon after seeing how she loves him, they accepted her into the family, though deep inside, they knew that there are more to come, which wouldn't have been the case if Naruto wasn't supposed to restore both the Uzumaki and Namake's clans. Hey boss, I brought the food, everyone turned to see Naruto's shadow clone entering the clearing while holding large bags of food. Soon they all settled down under the shade of a tree to eat. Zabuza had a bottle of sake for himself while Hinata and Haku had iced tea and for Naruto it's orange soda in terms of drinks while for snacks it was dango, cinnamon buns and donuts with white icing. They were eating when Hinata noticed that Naruto had a small frown on his face. Naruto-kun, what's the matter? she asked him, drawing the attention of the others. It's about the memory from my clone, he was on his way here when he bumped into a ninja. Strange thing was that he had his blue hair and an outfit similar to the one Haku wore when we first met and wore an eye patch along with the hidden mist's forehead protector, said Naruto. Zabuza's eyes narrowed and Haku looked a bit worried with what he just said. A blue-haired guy with an eye patch on his right eye. I recognize him, he's one of the members of the rebel forces in the war against the Mad Mizukage, said Zabuza. Rebellion? asked Hinata curiously with a Hint of fear. No one knows what caused this, but the Mizukage suddenly began an all-out eradication of anyone possessing a Kekiai Genkai, many supported while others opposed and I was in the latter. My squad and I attempted to infiltrate the base and assassinate the Mizukage but it ended up in failure, forcing us to escape from the village and it was along the way that I found Haku and took her in, Haku was the next to speak, I used to live with my mother and father, it was a happy life for us. But when the civil war occurred and the years passed by, everyone began to fear anyone with a Kekiai Genkai believing that their presence would bring more war and misfortune upon them. When my mother discovered that I possessed a Kekiai Genkai, she was fraught with fear and tried to keep it hidden. But my father saw it and he. he Haku's shoulders shook as she fought back the tears threatening to come out. Naruto quickly got up and went to hug her with Hinata joining him, he killed my mother and almost killed me too had I not subconsciously defended myself. It was later that Zabuza Tusan found me and took me in, she sobbed loudly and Naruto hugged her even more tightly to soothe her pain, gradually calming her down, Zabuza looked at the ground, feeling guilty about how children like Haku had ended up the same way, that he had failed such a critical mission. Damn that Mizukage! How could he do such a thing? Naruto raged in his mind. That's a question only, it, could answer, said Kurama with anger, the Mizukage didn't deserve to even be called human. So the war still goes on, asked Naruto looking at Zabuza. For you to see that mist mean then the answer is yes. You're thinking of finding out more from this guy right? asked Zabuza, at Naruto's nod of affirmation, he got up from the ground, then I'm coming along too, I'll take Haku back home for now, we'll see you there Naruto-kun, said Hinata. Okay Hinataheim, we'll see you later, Naruto and Zabuza left for the Hokage Tower which they're sure the Mist Ninja would be there to speak with Tsunade and Hiruzen. The duo entered the building where they saw the secretary sitting behind the desk and approached her. Excuse me, but is the Hokage meeting with anyone right now? asked Naruto. The woman looked up and smiled upon seeing Naruto and Zabuza, on Naruto-san, Zabuza-san. Hokagesima and Saradobai-sama is currently speaking to someone right now, so you would have to wait until they're done, thing is that we have some business with that two person and they would have to hear of it too, said Zabuza. Oh okay, you can go on ahead while I inform Hokagesima of your coming, thank you, then they climbed up the stairs and down the hall until they stood before the door leading to the Hokage's office, Naruto raised a hand and rapped on it a few times loud enough to be heard on the other side then a voice sounded on the other side. You can come inside, said Tsunade. They entered the office. Where they saw Tsunade and Hiruzen sitting behind the desk, 
they also saw the ninja whom Naruto's shadow clone had encountered along the way. He is a middle-aged man with blue hair which is styled in a mussed-up manner. His right eye is covered with an eye patch and some sort of talisman in each ear. He also wears a striped, gray suit with a green haori that has white trimmings that stop halfway down over them and the standard Mist Village's forehead protector. It's been a long time since we last met.ao, said Zabuza with a non-visible smirk. Said person's eye widened in shock before narrowing upon seeing the former Mist Ninja, Zabuza Momochi. What are you doing here? Last I heard of you, you were being on the run from the Mizukage's hunter Nines, true but thanks to this kid here, I was accepted as a ninja of Kanoha, Zabuza patted Naruto's head while saying this. Ao looked at Naruto skeptically, this young boy here helped you gain asylum in Kanoha? I find it hard to believe, he looks to be genin rank as far I can tell, I advise that you show my chunin some respect especially since he discussed it with me to take Zabuza in as a ninja of Kanoha, said Hiruzen with a frown, Tsunade clutched the edge of the desk to contain her anger if there's anything she hates nowadays it's slandering her godson. Ao was startled but soon recovered and bowed to Naruto in apology, I apologize for my words ninja-san, Naruto simply waved him off, it's okay, just try not to assume next time, now that is out of the way, concerning your request that I'm afraid we're unable to comply with it, said Tsunade as she read the scroll which Ao brought along with him. But why? Ao asked with worry. As of now, our Jounin's Nanbu are all out of the village on important missions with long durations save for a few remaining here in case of emergencies, surely you could even spare at least ten of your ninjas, the rebel forces has its back against the wall with the Mizukage bearing down us. Ao looked very desperate, my sama is counting on me to bring back allies to help turn the tide of the war to our side, I apologize but there's nothing else we can do, said Hiruzen sadly. Actually why don't we help them? Everyone turned towards Naruto with looks of surprise. Do you know what you're saying Naruto? You're going to get yourself involved in a war, said Tsunade. Ao looked at the blonde in shock, Naruto, as in Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze? I've read in the bingo books that he was the driving force rescuing the land of waves from a tyrant, subduing a bijou during the sand-slash-sound invasion, and the recent overruling of Doto in the land of snow, the very same one, Zabuza looked smug at this. Then why is he a Chunin, he should be a Jounin at most from such milestones, technically I am a late Chunin level close to early Jounin, but I can go beyond that thanks to a specialty of mine, said Naruto, he looked at Hiruzen and Tsunade, Zabuza and Haku told me about the war and frankly I'm pissed at the Mizukage for wanting to kill his people just because of their possession of a Kekiai Genkai, that's not how a Kage acts. If this war goes in his favor, what won't stop him from attacking clans like the Hyuga, Aburaim, Nara and others? It's best that we help them end this war over there than ignore its potential to spread to other countries, Tsunade and Hiruzen were unable to refute this statement, personally they felt that the Mizukage was tarnishing the title of Kage and wanted to go there were it not for their duties for the village. Tsunade looked into Naruto's eyes and saw nothing but determination, she knows that look as it depicts his natural stubbornness, refusal to be distracted from his goal until it is achieved, and to protect everyone close to him to his very last breath. The kid and I aren't the only ones going, I recommend Kakashi and Guy along with us. With his arsenal strapped to his wrist, we'll be done with this war in the shortest time possible and I'll personally make sure that he returns alive, said Zabuza. Tsunade let out a sigh before giving out her answer, very well then, you may go but under an alias. We can't afford to draw any more attention especially from a certain group, Naruto and Zabuza nodded in affirmation, knowing whom exactly she was talking about much to Ao's confusion but he was grateful nonetheless, he knows of the two mentioned ninjas and with Zabuza rejoining the battle, they now have a better chance to win the war. I thank you for your willingness to help. Should the war be won, the reformed Hidden Mist Village will form an alliance with the Hidden Leaf as per the agreement, said Ao. How would I be going? Naruto looked at Hiruzen for answers. I recall that the ANBU wanted to recruit you after witnessing the raid on Danzo's hideout but couldn't as you were assigned to a team and a genin at the time. But now that you're Chunin, 
they've created a special position for you as provisory ANBU member, then he chuckled in amusement, they must have really wanted you to join as they had already prepared your mask and uniform since then, they're contained with this scroll. All I can ask is that you return to us alive, don't worry Gigi, I promise to return. After all I'm going to become Hokage, Naruto spoke with determination as he received scroll from Hiruzen. I'll send for Kakashi and Gai to brief them on the mission before meeting you both at the gate, I wish you good luck, said Tsunade. Naruto and Zabuza nodded in affirmation and left the office with the former heading for the mansion while the latter for his own apartment. When Naruto got home and met Hinata and the others, he told them of the mission and they weren't happy about it with Haku being the most expressive by hugging him tightly and not letting him go. Please don't, you mustn't go. That war has taken so much from me and I don't want you and Tu San to be taken away from me too, she sobbed. Out loud. Listen to her Naruto-kun, there's no need to do this, said Ino, Fu along with Sakura and Hinata were in agreement. I understand why you're all worried which goes to show how much you love, and that warms my heart. But if I don't go and help them end this war, what won't stop that Mizukaja team from attacking Kanoha when he's through with the rebel forces because of the clans possessing Kekiai Genkai? You would get caught up in it and I'll never forgive myself if any of you got hurt or worse, said Naruto. Then we'll come with you to help, you could give us some weapons to defend ourselves, said Fu. And I'll help to beat those baddies, said Chomei pumping her fists with gusto. No I can't, Tsunade Bachan assigned this mission only to me, Zabuzasan, Kakashiniai and Gezenciai. Plus I'll be operating this mission under an alias to avoid recognition with my name already in the bingo book, said Naruto. Not to mention that the Akatsuki is out there looking for us, said Kurama, Chomei turned away with a pout at the refusal to join them. Haku still wasn't convinced, but dot but, Naruto pushed her back gently to look into her eyes before placing his lips upon hers for a long deep kiss. Haku felt all of her worry and fear being washed away by the warm from the kiss before pulling away to get a gasp of air, please dot just dot make to come back to us alive, promise this, Naruto nodded in affirmation, I will dot I promise to never die and return safely, an hour later, Kakashi, Gai. Zabuza and Ao were standing at the edge of the large gates waiting for Naruto to arrive so that they could set off for the hidden mist village and meet up with the leader of the rebel forces. Ao tapped his foot on the ground, expressing his impatience, how does he intend to make us wait, it's unbecoming of a man or Chunin for that matter, I can't blame him, my daughter must have been very reluctant in letting him to the hidden mist village, said Zabuza. Not to worry my friends. Naruto will be sure to arrive soon with the flames of youth empowering him, said Guy with his good guy pose, sending shivers down their spines. Kakashi poked his head out from the book which he was reading, hmm did you say something Guy? Damn you and your hip attitude Kakashi. But worry not, my flames of youth will not be doused with your coolness. Ao sweat dropped at all this, are all shinobi from Kanoha this dot eccentric? Sorry I'm late guys, the group heard Naruto's voice and turned around to see him wearing a black hooded cloak and black trousers, arm guards, gloves and black sandals with shin guards. He wears a mask with a fox motif inclusive of long pointed ears, detailed eyebrows, and three pairs of thick red stripes with two along either sides of his cheeks and one running from the top of his forehead. I gotta say Kitsune, a Naruto's codename, you certainly look good with the uniform, said Kakashi with an eye smile. The scarecrow's right, if the Hokage thing. Doesn't you have a decent role to fall back on, said Zabuza. Yes yes, nice and all but we must get a move on, we can't afford to keep leader Sama waiting any longer, said Ao. Okay lead the way then, said Naruto, the group took to leaping through the trees with Ao in the lead to the land of water. It was a long journey with them taking at least two breaks to rest for a few moments before resuming, but sure enough they had crossed the boundary between the land of fire and the land of water as the weather changed from warm to cool with mist blanketing the areas as well as the many islands surrounded by just as many lakes. Kurama told Naruto that her fellow bijou the three tails like to reside in areas like these due to the large bodies, 
piquing his curiosity about who's the current Jinchuriki of the Bijou and how he, she lived. The group were silently walking through the misty forest whilst keeping an ear out for any signs of enemies that might ambush them. I suppose that the Mizukage has his patrols frequent this area right? asked Zabuza. Yes, with our current losses he has been actively searching for the rebels in order to wipe us out once and for all, so we had to change locations whenever they come close to finding our base, said Ao. Then we should be prepared for any of those patrols to show up, said Kakashi. Narutakun, there are a group of mist shinobi heading your way. One of them must be a censor, said Kurama. Naruto quickly unsealed Tsukiyatoshi from his waist and took it out from his sheath, causing the other Jounin to take their individual fighting stance. I guess we've been found huh? asked Kakashi. Yeah, one of them is a censor, Naruto affirmed the question. The group of ninja landed on the clearing and had surrounded them, they used a pinstriped material which they wear as bracers and greaves which merge into their sandals, underneath this, they wear a full black shirt and pants over which they wear the village's variation of the flak jacket along with the their forehead protector. So we were right to hang around here, to think that we could find not only A.O. but also Zabuza Momochi, not to mention some of those tree huggers. Once we capture you, we'll find the rest of the rebel forces and wipe the rest of those with dirty blood, said one of the loyalists with a smirk. Zabuza growled in anger as he reached for Kubikura Bocho on his back, after all these years, nothing has changed with this place, how unyouthful of them to do such dastardly acts, said Guy in his taijutsu stance. My Muramesa hungers for your souls, be sure to sate it. Naruto charged forwards with Zabuza close behind and soon followed by the others. The mist ninja targeting Naruto weaved through a set of hand signs before calling out the jutsu, water style, water bullet, he opened his mouth to launch a volley of water spheres, Naruto darted left and right whilst slicing though some of the water projectiles before executing his next. Move. Secret arts, misty slash, his body became blurry as he dashed towards the opponent and appeared behind him before executing a two-hit combo to split his back wide open with the mist ninja falling to the ground dead with his soul absorbed into the Muramesa, send my regards to the scum whom I sent down to hell, Naruto flicked the blood of his sword and went to back up the others. Kakashi was clashing kunai with his own chosen opponent with skillful offense and defense, then he ducked under a vertical swipe before responding with a rising high kick to knock the mist ninja into the air and jumped after him, then Kakashi lashed out with a triple aerial roundhouse kick before using a powerful heel dropkick to drive his enemy to the ground, breaking his neck and landed safely on the ground. Guy was almost through with his as he slammed a jab onto the mist ninja's ribcage with such force that the cracking of bones could be heard from a distance while the ninja collapsed to the ground coughing up volumes of blood, it's even more unyouthful that you lack training, my beloved students would have defeated you as well. Yeah well, you're a training nut, Zabuza walked up with Kubikurabocho slung across his shoulder, covered in blood, we got all of them, but it's only a matter of time till the Mizukage finds out about this, you're right. Zabuzasan. We must make haste to the base and meet with leader Sama, said Ao. They resumed their journey towards the current base of operations, Ao signaled them to stop before a certain part of the forest which was blanketed with the thickest mist so far. He went through a set of hand signs and Naruto took note of chakra gathering at the eye patch, telling that Ao wasn't really blind in that eye and wondered what was behind the eye patch. I need you all to stay close to me, else you'll get lost in the mist, said Ao. Zabuza scoffed at this however, you forget that I can traverse through this kind of mist, how else have earned my place in one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist? They ventured through the forest, moving around trees and walking across lakes until finding themselves standing at the edge of a clearing where numerous tents as well as mist ninjas moving about, checking on supplies, tending to the wounded, training and more. A group of ninjas suddenly appeared in front of the group, armed to the teeth and ready to attack. However Ao strode forward with his hands out in a placating manner. Stand down men, they're with us, said Ao. Ao senpai, your back dot and is that Zabuza Momochi with you, a young ninja approached him and he looked surprised upon seeing Zabuza. He is a boy with short, 
tufty blue hair and dark eyes as well as having pointed shark-like teeth similar to Kisame and Zabuza. He wears a square, black-rimmed glasses connected to ear protector, a blue pinstriped shirt and camouflage pattern pants. He wears his forehead protector on the front holster which is being used to carry a queer-looking sword which Zabuza instantly recognizes. This sword features a wide flat blade with two curved indentations near its base to create some sort of cross guard which is wrapped up in bandages, two handles are connected to one another by a short length of cord. That's the Hiramakariai, where did you get it? Zabuza demanded the young ninja who quivered from the stair down, so Ao was the one to answer. Chojuro had proven himself to be worthy of wielding one of the blades and was bequeathed the Hiramakariai dot but honestly Chojuro, you should be more confident in yourself. I hope you've not been giving leader Sama any problems, said Ao sighing when he looked at the young ninja. Sorry Ao senpai, I'll try my best next time, Chojuro looked at the ground. Humph, maybe after the war I'll spar with you to see if you're any good with the blade, said Zabuza. Okay, I'm kinda looking at the male version of Hinataheim, or is it just me, thought Naruto. I'll take you to where our leader is, along with Chojuro, the group walked up to a large tent situated in the middle of the campsite, Leader Sama, I'll brought the allies from Kanoha. Permission to enter? You may enter, a feminine voice spoke from within the tent. I recognize that voice, Zabuza muttered to himself though Naruto heard him but decided to see for himself who the leader is. They entered the tent and was surprised to see such a beauty of a woman. She is a tall slender woman with auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back, a top knot tied with a blue band, and with four bangs at the front. Two bangs are short with one covering her right eye, and two are long, crossing each other at her bust just below her chin with fuchsia lipstick. She wears a long-sleeved dark blue dress that falls just below the knees and seems to be closed at the front with a zipper, and is kept open on the front right side from the waist down. Underneath she wears a mesh armor as well as a skirt in the same color as the dress with mesh leggings reaching down over knees underneath too. Around her waist is a belt with a pouch attached to the back on the left along with high-heeled sandals, shin guards reaching up over her knees, dark blue nail polish on her fingers and toes. Whoa, she looks so beautiful, thought Naruto with a blush, glad to be wearing a mask to hide it. Now now Narutokun, this is not the time for you to be dazzled by her beauty, said Kurama teasingly, making him blush even harder. Allow me to introduce to you our leader of the rebel forces, Mei Terumi, said Ao with pride. I knew that it was you. Zabuza exclaimed. Era? I never thought that I would see you again, Zabuza Momochi. Not since the failed assassination attempt on the Mizukage, and it appears that you've joined Kanoha as one of their ninjas. It's also a pleasure to meet you Kakashi Hataki and Might Guy, though I'm curious about who is that with you? He appears to be a member of the ANBU, said Mei with a smile. Kakashi bowed to her in respect, it's a pleasure to meet you as well, our Hokage was unable to provide most of our ninjas as they're currently unimportant so she sent for us to provide aid in the war, Mei nodded to his words, I can understand the reason, though I'm curious to ask why there's a single ANBU member here with you? Naruto spoke, I'm actually a provisory ANBU, only to take on the role during missions of high priority such as this war, I see though may I request that you remove your mask so I can see whom I'm willing to trust when on the battlefield? Naruto was taken aback from what she said and looked at Kakashi for his opinion, the Jounin himself was deep in thought. The reason why he's taken the position was to remain as inconspicuous as possible but if he's to be trusted along with the others, then he might have to reveal his identity unless. Very well then, Kitsune will reveal his identity to you, Naruto and the others looked at him in shock but he hadn't finished talking yet, however, he'll reveal it only to you and no one else considering that it is already a risk of him being here, you have a point there Kakashizen, though it is prudent that May gets to know our friend here better, said Ao however those words seem to have a different effect on May. Get to know better. Like go on a date. Which results to marriage, thought May darkly. After all, 
the best ways to gain trust is to hide no secrets between two individuals, gain trust. Hide no secrets. Point two individuals. I in order to get married, so I strongly agree that, ayo, said person turned to see Mae smiling with her eyes closed, shut up or I'll kill you. Those words were enough to scare Ao into submission while Kakashi, Guy, and Zabuza felt scared out of their wits. Naruto wasn't really affected, just a slight shiver along his spine anyways, I'll agree to your terms, reluctantly, Naruto reached for his mask and took it off then pulling down the hood to reveal his face, Mei's eyes widened in surprise before it changed into a flirtatious look at the slightly nervous blonde. Now I see why you would hide such a handsome face. The women must have been trying to get a piece of you haven't they, said Mei, she giggled upon seeing Naruto blush from her words, Era, aren't you so cute? My Sama. Surely you're well aware that he's younger than you, said Ao. Younger than me. So I'm too old for marriage? Mei then smiled sweetly at Ao again, we'll be having a spar later, hi, my Sama, Ao felt a sense of dread from that. Poor guy. He has totally forgotten the number one rule of never mentioning anything relating to a woman's age, thought Kakashi with pity. How youthful of them to train even during war, said Guy with the others looking at him with a sweat drop. Chojuro approached Naruto shyly, so you're Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I've heard so much about you. I can only wish that I can be as confident like you, Naruto smiled at the guy. You can be confident you just need to have more faith in yourself and the others close to you. My desire to protect others close to me is what gave me the drive to move forward and never back down, you're right, I actually want to be there to support my Sama and not let her down, then use that reason to get stronger, then you'll gain the confidence you wished for, Naruto placed a palm on Chojuro's shoulder, getting him to smile some more. Zabuza smirked under his mask, recalling the times Naruto would train with Hiruzen's grandson and his friends from time to time. Mei was watching with a smile, she was always with Chojuro's lack of confidence in his abilities to be able to bolster Kojuroken's confidence. I can only imagine how he would look, given a few years prior he might resemble Minato, then she spoke up for them to hear, I can see that it's been a long day, so we shall be holding the strategy meeting tomorrow in the morning. Kojuroken will show you where you can rest, okay then, thank you for your hospitality, said Kakashi. Thank you Mei-san, said Naruto with a foxy grin, Mei fought the instinct to coddle him as he put his mask and hood before leaving the tent. By Kami, he's just so cute. Maybe after the war I'll be requesting him for some missions, which will be a lot of fun. Mei looked through the gap of the flap with a dreamy look on her face. Somewhere far away from the base, where the hidden mist village is situated. The Mizukage sits at his office with a dark look on his face as he thought deeply of something unknown to others. He is a young adult, though rather short for his age with a short messy grey hair which fell over the right side of his face and spiked up on the left, and what seemed to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye all the way to the cheek. He wears a grey sleeveless shirt with the hidden mist forehead protector attached to the front, short-sleeved mesh armor over which he wears a green poncho, a turquoise sash around his waist paired with a matching green apron over his pants, and a pair of brown boots. Lending on a window behind is a club with uneven-sized hooks which have a green flower on the larger end. There was a knock on the door, which snapped him out of his thoughts much to his annoyance before calling to the person behind it. Come in and it better be worth my time, said the Mizukage. The door for a mist ninja to pass through and bow before the Mizukage, Mizukagesima, I bring news from the surveillance team. It has been reported that a patrol team has been found dead and tracks reveal that it has been done by shinobi not belonging to us or the rebel forces, hmm, it seems that those fools have gone to seek help from a neighboring shinobi village. No matter, they'll all fall before me. Once we destroy them, we'll attack the village that was foolish enough to help them, hi Mizuka Jessima, the mist ninja bowed once more before leaving the office. Soon enough. All those with the tainted blood will be wiped out from existence. Just like with the Yuki clan and the Kagaya clan, Ayagura the fourth Mizukage swear it, the Kagaya looked out the window with a dark smile. 
Naruto woke up in the tent which he shares with Kakashi as he stretched his arms and let out a loud yawn before rubbing his eyes of the sleepiness. Good morning Kuramakan, Chinamazan, thought Naruto with a fond smile. Good morning, Narakan. Hope you slept well, said Kurama. Good morning Naratosama, said Chinami with a bow. I'm well rested, I'll go look for Kakashiniai and find out what's going on this morning, thought Naruto, then he washed his face with a basin of water and a towel which he had sealed away in a scroll before putting on his ANBU uniform and mask. He stepped out of the tent to see the ninjas of the rebel forces going about preparations for the next incoming battle between them and the loyalists to the Mizukage. As he walked along, Naruto took note of how the ninjas were looking at him with confusion and a bit of distrust, he can't blame them since they don't truly know who he is aside from the fact that he came along with only a handful of Kanoha ninjas which included Zabuza and that he's part of the ANBU, Provisory. He continued on his way until finally locating both Kakashi and Gai a fair distance away. Kakashi was reading his book as usual while Gai was performing push-ups and having already gone over a hundred reps judging by the wide-eyed looks from the ninjas around them. Kakashi looked up and I smiled upon seeing the disguised blonde approaching them. Ah Kitsune, good to see that you're up, said Kakashi. Yeah, but where's Zabuza? asked Naruto, while looking around. Guy was the one to answer, our youthful comrade had gone to have a conversation with Kojirosan about their swords. What a sense of comradeship between swordsmen. Naruto rolled his eyes at his eccentrics. I have to admit that I never expected to go into a war with you, said Kakashi. Naruto caught on to what Kakashi actually meant, it's like you often say, expect the unexpected, and this just happens to be one of them, Kakashi chuckled softly before looking at the book in hand half-heartedly, that's quite true, but promise to come out of this alive that I've already lost too much from the last war, Naruto looked at his surrogate brother sadly, he had learnt that one of the reasons he was late to a lot of things is because he often goes to the memorial stone to gaze upon the names of the people close to him for hours, at times blaming himself for not being able to protect them. Don't worry, I already promised everyone that I'll return with the same going for you, said Naruto. Kitsune is right. Our fiery youth will blaze through all opposition and leave our enemies burning behind us. Guy got up to pat Kakashi in the back. Kakashi let out a sigh before smiling at them. Well, the visible parts, thanks, that was when they noticed. Zabuza walking towards them with Chojuro following them, were being called to Mei's tent for a strategy meeting along with her commanders, Kakashi closed his book and placed it into his ninja pouch, okay then, let's get going, the group made their way to the designated tent and went inside where Mei and Ao sitting around a table which has a large map on it with other top-ranking members of the rebel forces. Mei looked up and smiled upon seeing the group, especially Naruto. Era please sit down. We're about to commence with the discussion of the forthcoming battle against the Hidden Mist, said Mei. They complied and sat in the empty spaces, again Naruto felt the stares from the other ninjas but for some reason they weren't the reason why he was feeling nervous at that moment. Naruto-kun, calm down. Now isn't the time to lose your nerve, said Kurama. I can't help it, this is the first time I'm participating in something like this, thought Naruto. It is understandable but you will be partaking in events such as this as you advance through the ranks until eventually becoming Hokage, said Chinami. You have a point there, then he snapped back into attention when he took note of Mei about to speak to everyone around. It has been over a year since the beginning of our rebellion against the fourth Mizukage, we've have been utilizing guerrilla warfare and tactical withdrawals to chip them off bit by bit. However, Yagura wasn't one to be idle as well especially with his status as a Jinchuriki which he uses the Bijou's power to his advantage, the Kanoha ninjas except Zabuza were shocked from the revelation. The fourth Mizukage is a Jinchuriki? This changes a lot of things, thought Naruto. But why would Isabukan cooperate with someone like him? He has always been somewhat of a pacifist, never retaliating unless within reason, said Kurama confusedly. Could it be that both are being controlled, just Gaiachin and Shukakukan? Such a possibility cannot be ruled out, said Chinami. According to our scouts, 
the loyalist will be moving out tomorrow and there's word that Yagura will make a reappearance on the battlefield once more, May continued. Ao then spoke up, we have reasons to believe that he intends to use the full power of the Sanbai to decimate our forces in one fell swoop should we engage them, the others murmured amongst themselves in worry from the news, it was because of this critical situation that my Sama sent me to Kanoha and request for assistance, and yet you returned with only four instead of an army, how are we supposed to match up to those loyalists? Said one of the commanders angrily. You may say that, but before us is Kakashi Hataki the copy ninja, might guy the green beast of prey. These two are one of the best ninjas of Kanoha and we're fortunate with the return of Zabuza Momochi. Although I'm mystified with the presence of a singular ANBU member who's obviously an adolescent, but he must be capable if he were to be brought along, said another of the commanders. If only you knew who he actually is, thought May mirthfully, with them lending us their aid, our forces will be able to launch a decapitation strike, Naruto quirked an eyebrow upon hearing that, I read about something like that from one of the books. Isn't it a military tactic where one takes down the leadership or command of a group or something like that? Indeed, by doing so, it will implant total discord among the ranks which provides a massive advantage to the rebel forces. However failure to execute the tactic will result in a fierce retaliation from the opposing side, said Chinami. So how would you go on about it? asked Kakashi while leaning forward. Mei took out a paintbrush and an inkpot, then she proceeded to draw several figures and arrows pointing from one place to the other as everyone watched her at work before she finally finished and put the tools away. Upon departing from the campsite, our forces will divide into four platoons which will diverge to engage the enemy and keep them occupied in order to face Yugura alone. Kakashi, Guy and Zabuza will be in each of the platoon while Kitsune and I will be in the fourth and will push through to engage Yugura, said Mei. With all due respect my Sama, but why partner with an unknown instead of the aforementioned three? They should be more than capable of assisting in your battle against Yugura due to their experience from the previous wars, said one of the commanders. Kakashi then spoke, you raise a good point, however I prefer that Kitsune accompanies your leader. His reason for even participating this war is because of his unique abilities which will definitely tip the scales of the forthcoming battles to your side, how do you expect us to accept that when we don't even know his identity or capabilities, said one of the ninjas. Rest assured that Kitsune had revealed his identity to Maisama and possesses a method to ward off any possibilities of impersonation, said Ao. Zabuza simply scoffed, take my word for it. I've seen what the kid can do and he's no slouch, the rest could only remain silent from his statement. So when do we engage the enemy? asked Guy. Tomorrow at dawn, said May. Till then, we'll be preparing for probably the final battle with the Mizukage and his loyalists. Meeting is adjourned, said Ao. Everyone proceeded to leave with the Kanoha team being the last, they were halfway across the clearing when Zabuza suddenly turned around to face Naruto with the others taking notice. Hey Kitsune, let's have a short spar, Kenjutsu only, said Zabuza. Naruto was mildly surprised, given that he always sparred with him often back at Kanoha, sure but why now? Meetings like those tend to bore me, so I want to work the kinks out of my system. Bust out one of your blades already and let's get things going, Zabuza pulsed chakra to a seal on his left shoulder as there was a puff of smoke and his kubikure bocho appeared holstered to his back. Okay Zabuza, Naruto unsealed Tsukiyatoshi at his waist and drew out the blade which emitted green flames as he took the oboro stance to face Zabuza with everyone watching. May herself came out of the tent due to the murmuring herd outside and watched with interest. Let's go kid. Zabuza unsheathed his sword and charged forward with Naruto doing the same time. Both sides clashed swords and Naruto quickly dashed backwards to avoid being overwhelmed by the weight of the Zanbatu then ran in an arc to slash from Zabuza's left side. Zabuza sharply swiveled round to block with the broad side of his sword before lashing out with a horizontal swing for the blonde to backflip then somersault into the air and descend with a spinning vertical slash. Recognizing the incoming attack, Zabuza darted to the side to evade the attack then performed an overhead slash, 
Naruto rolled to the side for the blade to strike where he had landed before performing a handspring to launch to both feet at his opponent's head. Zabuza reflexively raised an arm to block the double kick and with a heave, tossed Naruto who somersaulted in midair before landing back on the ground. The crowd watched in shock at the sight of the sword fight going on between one of the previous generation of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist and the mysterious ANBU of Kanoha. Seeing the former Kiri ninja in action is a testament to his past milestones, however the ANBU wasn't someone to scoff at either with such a mystifying sword style to able to contend. Kakashi watched with interest and Guy was making loud proclamations of youth. Wow, Naratosan fights with such skill and confidence. Can I really reach that state like him, thought Chojuro as he watched in awe. Astounding, to be able to match Tsubuza and this is merely Kenjutsu, just what other skills do you do possess which placed you among the high ranks of the bingo books aside from being the son of the yellow flash, thought Ao. May watched with interest at the spar, it's good to see that Zabuza hasn't lost his touch while he was gone, however, her gaze turned sultry upon looking at Naruto, he is quite flexible if I do say so myself, back in the fight, Naruto was unleashing a barrage of slashes while Zabuza gripped the handle with one hand and threw the circular hole at the end with the other, and was rapidly angling the Zambatu in different positions to deflect the incoming strikes before pushing forward to slam. Him with the flat side of the blade, Naruto immediately reacted by jumping in the air kicking off the blade to somersault away from any further attacks then dashing forward. He tossed Tsukiyatoshi into the air much to everyone's surprise, Zabuza's eyes narrowed as he prepared for whatever technique he was about to perform as the blonde drew close, Naruto went in with a low sweep kick which Zabuza swung his blade to cut but that was a feint as he dug that. Foot into the ground a few meters before the blade and stood upright with the other leg over his head to catch the Tsukiyatoshi with chakra applied before bringing it down for an improvised heel drop kick. Zabuza reached out to grab the incoming attack by the shin with both struggling until Naruto jumped with the leg on ground and used it to kick him in the chest and flipping away from him with the blade back in his grip before landing on the ground, ready to engage once more. Both looked ready to clash blades again but then they put away their blades and bowed to each other in respect, signaling the end of the spar. The audience let out a breath from the suspense of watching. Thanks for the workout, I definitely needed that, said Zabuza with a non-visible smirk. It was my pleasure Zabuzasan, I'll returning to my tent for some rest. Please excuse me, Naruto bowed once more before walking away with the ninjas murmuring behind him like before. Kakashi walked up to Zabuza and spoke quietly between each other, there was a reason why you asked him for a spar in front of everyone instead of privately, isn't there? Yeah, I was getting pissed off by the number of naysayers doubting him. So what better way to clear their doubts than by showing a little of what the kid can do than a spar to show them who will be fighting along with them in the battlefield, said Zabuza. You seem to really care for him to do that, said Kakashi with a chuckle. Humph. The kid has done a lot for Haku and I than anyone else. There are times when I have this feeling that both of us would have been dead if not for him. So yeah I owe the kid a lot, Guy approached the duo with all smiles, that happens to be the most youthful spar which I'm proud to witness, perhaps next time Kakashi and I will partake to make the most of our burning youth, he smiled at them with a sparkle from his teeth. Kakashi and Zabuza turned towards him with bored expressions and spoke at the same time, hmm? Did you say something? Damn you and your hip and cool attitude Kakashi. Now you've infected Zabuza with it too. Guy cried out with everyone watching him like he was crazy, unaware that Zabuza and Kakashi bumped fists. Now I see why you always do it Kakashi, it's amusing to see him act like that, said Zabuza. One of the saving graces of being his eternal rival, Kakashi replied with an eye smile. Back at the tent, Naruto was busying himself by inscribing some seals on the scrolls around him while having a chat with Kurama and Chinami. I see, so that's why Zabuza wanted a spar with me with everyone watching, thought Naruto. That's right, he wanted the rebels to see what you can do before taking to the field, said Kurama. It is normal in times of war whereby veterans tend to look down on newcomers and rookies due to their lack of experience unless proven otherwise, said Chinami. 
well I am still inexperienced, the only war which I partook was during the sand slash sound. Invasion on Kanoha, thought Naruto. But that amount of experience will be of use to you in this forthcoming battle and you're proving by creating more of the special scrolls which you had given to the twice former Hokage, said Chinami. You're right, plus I promised everyone that I'll return to them alive, Naruto stretched his arms and let out a yawn, what time is it? He poked his head out with the mask on and was surprised to see that the sun had already set, whoa, it's night time already. Well you have been entirely focused on the scroll so you must have lost track of time, said Karama. True, I better get some food and wash up a bit before going to bed, thought Naruto, then he rummaged through some of the scrolls in his ninja and pulled one out, he unfurled the scroll to unseal a bento which Haku had made for him before he left and ate till he was sated. Afterwards, Naruto decided to walk out of the campsite and meditated underneath a tree to mentally prepare himself for the battle tomorrow. Things were quiet, but Naruto frowned a bit before calling out, You can come out now, I know you're there, said Naruto preparing to unseal either of his Muramesa blades for combat, a black silhouette walked out from behind a tree close by and gradually approached, making him more apprehensive. It was when the moonlight eased his vision that he saw who it was. Era era, you don't need to be so tense Kitsunakun, said the person. Meisan, said Naruto surprised at her presence. Said Kunoichi pouted from how she was addressed, no need for the San, just Mei or Mei-chan. I'm not always for honorifics, oh okay, Mei-chan. What are you doing here? asked Naruto. Well, I was enjoying the nightly breeze when I saw you wander away from camp and couldn't help but feel curious about where you were going to, so I followed you here, said Mei. Well I thought of meditating a little to prepare myself for the battle tomorrow, Naruto replied. Ah uh, I see, that's a smart thing to do. That's quite mature for someone your age, thank you, Naruto smiled behind the mask. It was silent between the two of them until Mei decided to speak up once more, there's something I've been meaning to ask, she took note that he was paying attention, dot is there a more personal reason why you are participating in this war? Naruto was silent for a few moments then he took off the mask to look at Mei straight in the eyes, dot it's true that I have a personal reason, back when my team and I first met Zabuza, we were enemies and there is this girl who accompanied him. She too originated from Kirigakure and possesses a bloodline limit like her mother, both kept it a secret to hide from the Mizukij and his loyalists. Unfortunately, the father was also a loyalist and had found out their secret so he led a group to kill her mother and almost killed her too had it not been for her bloodline limit instinctively triggering to protect her. It was later that Zabuza took her from the streets and became somewhat like a tool but in reality she is like a daughter to him. When we took them into Kanoha, she became someone precious to me. The thought of children having their families broken apart because of the Mizukij's machinations enrages me to no end because they don't deserve such a thing, which was why I decided to end this war once and for all to ease her pain and prevent more children from suffering the same fate, he turned towards Mei, and I can tell you fight for the same reason. Mei had been listening to his story and felt angered at Yagura for what the girl experienced before replying to the blonde, you're right. Narutakun, I myself possess two bloodline limits and before that had to endure the damned academy graduation ritual like Zabuza did as well. Unlike you, I saw many killed simply because they possess blood different from others. The survivors began to see their bloodlines as a curse rather than a blessing. I decided not to stand and watch any longer, but fight back against Yugura's tyrannical rule with many others joining me for the cause, Naruto looked at Mei with a smile, that is something to be admired and respected, Mei giggled and squatted to his level, causing the blonde to blush from the view of her cleavage, the same could be said for you, not only are you strong, you're also loyal and protective of those close to you for that is why you chose to join and help win the war, who thank you, Naruto stammered and shyly looked away, Mei fought down the urge to let out a squeal and cuddle him. Ah, aren't you the cutest thing when you act like that? Mei pushed Naruto's headband back a bit to kiss him on the forehead, consider that a good luck charm for tomorrow, Narutokun, she left with a skip in her step, leaving Naruto behind in a stupefied state. Dot uh dot what just happened, thought Naruto. Humph, 
It seems like she has taken a shine, said Karama while pouting with jealousy then she thought, I wish there was a way to turn off his natural charm, Naratosama, it's getting late and you need to return to camp and rest for tomorrow, said Chinami, and don't forget to put on your mask, oh right, I almost forgot, thought Naruto, putting it back on. Of course you would, said Karama grumbled. Karamakan, please don't be mad, dot okay Narakan, but only if you come and keep me company tonight, sure thing, with that said, Naruto made his way back to the campsite to sleep in the tent. At the crack of dawn, Naruto and Kakashi had woken up to gear up on their ninja tools among other items which will serve as useful during the battle. Afterwards, they left for the departure point where they saw the forces gathering with Gai, Zabuza, Mei, and the others already there. I see you're all set to go, said Ao. Yes, but there's something I would like to give you all, Naruto put his hand into his ninja pouch and took out four scrolls out to them then he reached for four of the rings which glowed before coming off the bracelet and held them out as well, inside each of them is an empowered shadow clone which will help out in the battle since I won't exactly be nearby, and these rings will allow you to communicate with each other mentally as well as summon a powerful weapon to wield upon saying, equip, said Naruto, before Kakashi, Gai, Zabuza and Mei took a ring and scroll each and equipped them. Ha, hey, can't wait to send those loyalists to hell, said Zabuza eager to use the ring already. I'm ready to let my youth explode, said Gai with a sparkly smile. Hopefully this war will end sooner than I think, said Kakashi. Very well then, we'll commence with the formation. My only request is that you all fight with everything you've got and come back alive. May proclaimed with the rebel forces roaring out to her command before breaking in four platoons and heading out in different directions with Kakashi, Zabuza and Gai in tow while Naruto remained with Mei, Ao and Chojuro in the fourth. Elsewhere in another campsite ere the Mizukage and his army were stationed, Yagura was currently in his tent meditating when he heard footsteps approaching before the tent flap opened for Akiri ninja to enter and went down on one knee in greeting. Mizuka Jessima, our sensors have just picked up movement from the rebel forces approaching in this direction. We've identified that there are four platoon marching in four parallel directions, said the shinobi. Yagura thought deeply before chuckling darkly, I see, so they seek to preoccupy my army while aiming for me directly with a decapitation strike. Errant fools, how do we respond, Mizuka Jessima? Divide the army into four platoons as well and send them out to clash with the rebels, I'm aware that their leader fight through to get to me. Might as well give them what they want before learning the consequences, said Yagura. Yes, my lord. Then Kiri Ninja disappeared in a body flicker to carry out the order. I wonder who the fool soon to die in my presence is. I certainly hope that he's entertaining, thought Yagura. Meanwhile with the 4th platoon Naruto and the others were dashing through the trees for about an hour now while tensed for the eventual encounter with the opposing Kiri Ninjas. It was then that Ao suddenly called out to the platoon. We have enemies inbound. Prepare yourselves, said Ao. No sooner he said that, did a volley of Kanai and Shuriken come flying towards them. The rebel ninjas took out Kanai's in hand and proceeded to deflect the incoming projectiles though some of them got it. Naruto himself had unsealed both Muramesa blades and was rapidly defending himself with Tsukiyatoshi then swung into action as he lunged at the enemy. Secret Arts, Arc he swung Tsukiyatoshi to release a spinning crescent-shaped wave but the Kiri ninjas leapt out of the way as it flew in a curve with one of the ninjas weaving through a set of hand signs. Water style, liquid. Bullet, the ninja opened his mouth and fired a barrage of water spheres straight at Naruto, the blonde took evasive action as he continuously leapt from branch to branch before getting into position for a counterattack. Secret Arts, Universe. With the blade positioned to his side, Naruto dashed forward at blurring speeds to actually phasing through his target and stopping behind him as the Kiri ninja stood there for a moment before falling off the tree to the ground below with blood pooling from his corpse. Naruto heard something whistling through the air and turned shuriken heading his way, then he rapidly deflected them. Lava style, lava spray, a stream of lava came from above and enveloped the Kiri ninja who screamed out in agony before melting away in the liquid fire. Mei landed nearby, 
licking a drip of lava from her lips which curled into smile as she winked at him before leaping towards her next target. Naruto stared wide-eyed at what just happened, I so pity the person that pisses her off, most likely the person being a pervert, said Kurama with a smile at the thought of a certain someone getting just that. Naruto snapped back to attention as two more Kiri ninjas lunged at him with brandished katanas, he flipped off the tree branch to land on the ground and backed away a few meters with them in pursuit. He readied himself before deflecting the first slash and quickly ducked under the next strike which followed up from the second Kiri ninja. Naruto lashed out with a low sweep kick to knock one off his feet then turned to block a thrust with sparks emitted from the blades grinding against each other as he stepped in and used a knee strike to slam into the chin of the second before dashing backwards, secret arts, earth runner, he slashed at the ground which launched a small wave along towards them, resulting in an explosion upon contact. Get him! Naruto turned around to see more Kiri ninjas charging towards him with intent to overwhelm with numbers. I don't have time to waste here, running across fields, the bracelet glowed brightly before fading as Naruto was re-equipped with the cipher blade and its additional equipment much to the shock of his enemies. What the heck is that? asked one of the Kiri ninjas. Forget that and let's kill him already, said another, then they flung a volley of shuriken and kunai at the masked ninja. Naruto activated the gauntlet for a thin red beam of light to shoot out from it and aimed ahead of him, reflect plasma catapult, he shot off like a bullet straight at the incoming projectiles with his body shrouded with red plasma, any kunai or shuriken which made contact were knocked out of the way, surprising the enemies. While still in motion, Naruto pointed the cipher blade as the red plasma began to be concentrated into it then he performed a turning outward leaning horizontal slash with the plasma energy creating a long arc in front of him. Some of the ninjas jumped out of the way but the few were sliced in half along with the trees nearby and fell to the ground. Naruto then called out, option C, a small black sphere with red pores shot out from one of his pouches into the air before red plasma flowed out from it to take on the shape of an eagle. The construct let out a screech before swooping towards its targets at high speed and blitzed right through them before fading away and returning to the pouch. He reached into his ninja pouch and took out a handful of kunai which are also coated in yellow plasma, reflect cipher. Reflect kunai. Naruto took aim before throwing the kunai and watched as they bounced from the tree trunks then struck where the ninjas were hiding and he pulsed his chakra to activate the explosive tags attached for a chain explosion. Water Style, Raging Waves Naruto turned around to see a Kiri ninja standing behind as he just completed a series of hand signs before expelling a powerful stream of water straight at him. Suddenly, both the plasma scarf and cipher blade changed colored from crimson red to bright blue then he quickly charged up the blade with plasma ultra cold cipher. Charged strike, with a swing of the blade, the water was instantly frozen which also included the kiri ninja, shadow kick, he slid across the ground on one foot at a steady speed to connect a kick on the frozen enemy the other one leg all the while leaving a trail of green afterimages to shatter him into little pieces. Naruto could only shake his head sadly at this battle, none of this would have happened if that madman hadn't made such a despicable order, he turned towards the sound of battle ahead of him, which is why I have to help them end this, option B, another black sphere this one with blue pores emerged from the pouch and hovered before him as blue plasma flowed out from it to take on the shape of a panther, let's go. Naruto jumped onto its back before the feline construct took off towards the battle zone ahead. In the gradually war-torn battlefield, the rebels were currently engaging the loyalists in an all-out battle with ninja tools and jutsus flying everywhere in order to gain dominance over the other with neither side getting a lead. Suddenly something caught their attention and looked only to be shocked upon seeing something dressed in ANBU gear was riding an energy construct of a panther straight towards them. Naruto leapt off the panther as it lunged for the loyalists while he dove towards them with the cipher blade emitting a red aura. He landed in the middle of a group and performed a 360 spinning slash to bisect them with a few barely able to jump out his range and that alone enough to tell anyone whose side he's on. One of the loyalists brandished a kunai and ran at Naruto with the intention to stab, 
however Blonde performed a diagonal slash to slice cleanly through the ninja tool and cut open his chest, leaving him to collapse to the ground with a growing pool of blood. Several more enemies charged at Naruto and were launching a barrage of kanai and shuriken towards him. Naruto pointed the gauntlet towards the sky and called out, Reflect Plasma Catapult, he launched himself high into the sky for the incoming projectiles to deflect each other before calling out once more, Option C, he summoned the Scarlet Plasma Eagle Construct to swoop down to pierce through a part of the targeted group while he flung a handful of kanai to take out the remainder. Naruto turned around to see some of the enemies weave through sets of hand signs and got ready for their incoming jutsus with the cipher blade or options quick to utilize. Water style, water bullet, the first fired a large orb of rotating water. Water style, water wave palm, the next extended his palm to expel a powerful jet of water. Water style, water dragon bullet, the third launched a large water attack in the form of a serpentine dragon along with the others. Naruto dashed towards the Jutsus and summoned option B to ride upon as he switched the cipher blade to ultra-cold mode, he swung the rapidly to instantly freeze the water orb then shatter it to pieces, the panther leapt into the air to evade the second water Jutsu with the water dragon lunging towards him, ultra-cold boomerang throw. Naruto threw the cipher blade as it sliced through the dragon to instantly freeze it as well for the panther to run along towards the enemies, he leapt off towards them whilst catching the cipher blade in midair for it to emit a yellow aura, explosive cipher, charged strike, he performed a 180 degree slash to strike the enemies and quickly dashed backwards as their bodies were emitting yellow auras. What did Yuga? One of the loyalists were speaking when the aura overwhelmed them and they suddenly exploded without so much of a warning. So far so good, we're laying the pressure on the mist ninjas from the beginning and just need to keep on going just like this, said Naruto as the cipher blade disappeared back into the bracelet, how are the others Chinamazon? Their vitals are in good condition, Naruto-sama, Chinami replied. Good to know. Naruto looked ahead to see more loyalists appearing in the battlefield, better do my best over here too and make my way towards Yugura. Devil may cry, he activated the bracelet to summon rebellion in hand with the dual handguns ebony and ivory holstered underneath his cloak. He dashed towards the enemies that were moving in towards him with vigilance and intent to kill. Naruto deflected the incoming strikes with slight movements from side to side then dashed backwards before moving in for an attack. Hacker Naruto lashed out with a four-hit combo with the last one being powerful enough to blast one of the enemies away from him, hearing a whistle in the air, Naruto turned around to block an overhead strike from behind and planted a kick in the torso to knock him back, high time, he performed an upward strike in the form of a baseball swing before quickly rolling away when one of the loyalists flung a handful of kanai at him, he continued to roll along the ground before performing a single-handed handspring to flip into the air as he attached rebellion to his back then drew the handguns out of their holster and took aim with a smirk hidden by his mask, it's playtime, ladies. He pulled the triggers to rapidly fire at the confused enemies with several getting gunned down while others quickly used the replacement jutsu to take cover. Naruto stopped shooting and cautiously looked around his surroundings, he saw slight traces of movement behind the trees and rushed towards them. No sooner did he enter the forestry that the enemy ninjas ambushed him from behind the branches of trees, inverse rainstorm. Naruto leapt high into the air and spun around whilst firing to unleash a torrent of bullets to knock them all down to the ground, rainstorm, then he spiraled downwards to continue firing at his downed enemies to finish them off. Asterisk Psi Asterisk that's many blinded enemies down. Naruto turned towards the sounds of battle ahead, dot and a whole lot more to go, Naruto-kun, I'm sensing Isabu's chakra several kilometers from here. Yagura must be positioned behind his army, said Kurama. Best guess is that he's expecting the strongest to make for him, might as well give him what he wants, thought Naruto, then he holstered the handguns and took off to engage more of the enemy. In another part of the battlefield, Zabuza was cutting down the opposition with his Kubikuribocho from left to right. The loyalists were afraid upon seeing the demon of the mist appear along with the rebel forces but now they're terrified from seeing his relentless slaughter. 
He swung his sword to dismember multiple enemies as they attempted to attack him in a pincer formation only to fail miserably. Is this the best you can all do? Either I've gotten much stronger since I left this hellhole or you're seriously lacking training under Yagura's rule, said Zabuza with a smirk behind his mask. Silence traitor. You will be executed for your assassination attempt on Yagurasama and supporting those dirty bloodliners, said one of the loyalists. Better a traitor with a recovered conscience than a monster with no regard for life. It's about time that I finally put an end to this damned war, said Zabuza. And how do you suppose to do that? You're only delaying your inevitable death, oh I'll die alright, but only naturally, Zabuza strapped the Kubikuribocho to his back then swiftly weaved through a set of hand signs, water style, water dragon bullet, water shot out from a nearby lake as it took on the shape of a dragon which roared loudly and lunged at its targets, blasting them away with massive water pressure though the most experienced were able to evade the powerful jutsu and were retaliating with jutsus of their own. Water style, water whip jutsu, the shinobi lashed out with water constructs towards Zabuza, who quickly used the flat side of his zambatu as a shield to defend against before jumping back to create some distance between them then unsealed a handful of shuriken to throw at them only to be deflected with kunai. I think I've been taking it easy on you amateurs, time for me to get serious and show you just how I got my rep as the demon of the mist dot with a little help from my son-in-law. Not like he's ever going to hear something so embarrassing from me and you're gonna die anyway, Zabuza sealed away the Kubikuribocho before holding out the hand wearing the ring and called out, Equip. The ring emitted a bright flash of light which slightly blinded all present before fading to reveal Zabuza holding a large two-handed doubled-edged sword with a length similar to Kubikuribocho, its hilt is wrapped in brown leather, the outer edge is silver metal and the interior is covered in intricate markings running down the center of the blade depicting ghastly faces open-mouthed and screaming. If Zabuza wielding his Zambatu wasn't frightful enough, now this sword's appearance and the aura which it's currently radiating makes it look as if the swordsman is holding a tool forged by the Shinigami itself. Zabuza suddenly felt visions flow into his mind, he saw a red-hooded man with glowing white eyes as he battled beings both holy and demonic as he rode atop a blackened horse with a fiery mane while swinging the blade. He smiled as information flowed into his mind and learnt the name of the sword, well now dot looks like I have the fortune of wielding a blade owned by one who represents the very essence of what we're currently engaged in. Consider it a privilege to set eyes on the Chaos Eater. Zabuza then charged forwards with the sword dragging along the ground as he drew close to the enemy with them charging right back at him despite their inner fears. The demon swordsman swung the blade with half spins for radial attacks to strike the loyalists surrounding him discovered that Chaos Eater was somehow absorbing some sort of energy from the enemy he slays and the aura would become stronger, but for now he paid half a mind on it and continued to attack. He then heard rapid footsteps approaching and quickly spun around two block an overheard strike from a loyalist wielding a katana. Zabuza pushed back to initiate a triple hit with the fourth being a splitting strike which slammed the ground to cause a mini quake and killing the enemy. Come on, is that all you got? Zabuza dashed up to a pair of mist ninjas and performed an uppercut to launch them into the air along with himself then juggled them in midair with a barrage of slashes before ending with a somersault strike. The aura on the Chaos Eater grew larger as the energy is being drained from the fallen enemy and Zabuza is having a gut feeling that it's about to do something but continued to attack nonetheless. He targeted his next opponent then dashed across the field with a lunging stab to pierce all the way to the back, he swung around to fling the corpse into an incoming mist ninja to knock him back. Suddenly, the Chaos Eater started shaking as the aura surged from the blade and engulfed Zabuza much to his surprise. The demon swordsman felt something stirring from within, it felt like rage towards the Mizukage and his men for their actions, and it was clawing to get out and to unleash itself upon them. Rhea Zabuza roared out as a pillar of flames burst from within him towards the sky for a few moments before receding to reveal a horrendous sight to all present in the field. In his place is a hulking fiery demon with vestigial wings on its back and a sword of fire in its hand. 
The loyalists quivered in fear at the sight and their hearts skipped a beat upon seeing the demon slowly turned its head towards their direction and all hell broke loose when it roared and charged straight at them. Kill it. Kill it now. IT mustn't get any closer to Mizuka Jessima, one of the mist ninja cried out hysterically. The mist ninjas used their most powerful jutsus and threw kunai wrapped with explosive tags at the fiery demon, resulting in a chain of explosions and steam then everything went silent, is is it dead? Shirk the mist ninja got his answer when a flaming sword shot out from the mist and sliced his head clean off before the demon stepped out much to their horror at it still being alive. The swordsman turned demon swung the flaming sword left and right to decimate his foes in a frenzy, then he grabbed one with its free hand and incinerated him before jumping into the air and stomping on the ground to unleash a radial burst of flames to burn his surrounding enemies. Retreat. Retreat now, one of the loyalists cried out in fear and ran away with the rest at his heels, the demon was about to give pursuit when it suddenly went down on one knee as the flames died out and faded away to reveal Zabuza panting in exhaustion. What the hell happened to me? Felt as if my body was on fire but I wasn't getting burnt dot and there was this feeling of overwhelming strength, he looked at the chaos eater in hand, you definitely have something to do with this, one of the rebel ninjas landed next to him, Zabuzasan, are you okay? I'm fine, just a little tired, Zabuza replied, I need a status report, your assault had sent the enemy into a state of confusion and fear, so they're now retreating to regroup with the others. I see. Zabuza reached into his ninja pouch and took out a soldier pill to replenish his chakra before getting back to his feet. Then we continue to pursue them and keep the pressure on them, yes, sir. Zabuza then led his platoon in the direction which the loyalists ran off to. In another part of the battlefield, Kakashi was rather busy fighting his own share of enemies with his Sharingan I exposed to get edge on them. He just parried a kunai strike with his own before retaliating with a roundhouse before back flipping a few times to build some distance and weaved through a set of hand signs. Fire style, grand fireball jutsu, he took in a deep breath before expelling a massive ball of fire from his mouth towards the enemies, burning quite a few whilst several others were able to evade the jutsu. From the corner of his eye, he saw a mist ninja forming several hand signs and proceeded to mimic them before ending in the final hand sign, water style, water shuriken jutsu, water swirled around their open palms which took on the shape of spinning shuriken before throwing them only for the projectiles to clash in midair and bursting into water droplets much to the opponent's shock, hmm, this could come into good use later. I'm sure Otuto would love to learn it. Well, back into the fight, he took off in blur to appear right in front of the mist ninja, then use an uppercut to launch him into the air, then jumping in pursuit to knock him down to the ground with a heel drop kick. Suddenly, multiple mist ninjas appeared around him in a circle armed with kunai and katanas in preparation of overwhelming him with numbers. Kakashi simply shook his head in disappointment, while strength in numbers is a good strategy, it's unfortunate that I happen to know a certain jutsu to counter it. It's a good thing I learnt for a situation like this. He took a stance as a blue rune with Siddha characters surrounded him and blue electricity radiated from his body, Ninpo, art of the Inazuma. He went through a set of postures before jumping into the air as lightning bolts burst out from his body and struck the mist ninjas such power that their skins were charred before falling to the ground dead. Kakashi sent his thoughts through the ring to communicate to Naruto, Kitsune, what's your status? Doing good so far on my side, currently slashing and gunning my way through the loyalists. I'm sensing the Mizukage at the far end of the battlefield behind his army, apparently he's waiting for the strongest of the rebels to show up to fight him, Naruto replied. Kakashi's eyes narrowed upon hearing that do not engage him immediately and wait for backup, he's a Kage for a good reason despite his tyranny and a Jinchuriki with obvious experience in using the Bijou's power, I know, which is why I'm trying to slow down a bit for you to catch up so we can meet in the middle with the others, Kakashi let out a sigh, seeing as how Naruto inherited his mother's impatience during battle and recalled how Minato would talk about her at times diving into battle. Ahead of others before backup would arrive therefore knowing that he has to move quickly to rendezvous with the young blonde very well then, I'll meet up with you. Just try not to get in over your head, will do Nizan, 
then the link between them cut off between them. If Minato Sensei were alive, I would be feeling sorry for him for having to deal with both Kushina and Naruto at the same time, Kakashi snapped back to attention to see more. Mist Ninja's heading his way, oh well, I better get over there or I'll get an earful for not watching over him when I go to heaven, he raised his hand to display the ring and called out, equip. There was a bright flash of light before fading to revealing Kakashi wielding a single-edged Japanese sword in hand, he started seeing visions of a man dressed in a black ninja outfit as he perched on the spire of a tower with arms crossed a long black scarf flowing in the wind at night. So he must be one of Naruto's senseis, I can see why he was so strong. I'll be sure to wield this blade with honor, Kakashi then dashed towards the group of enemies ahead of him and began to slash at them with techniques foreign him to him as he attacks with the dragon sword. Kakashi took one down with a vertical slash then turned to jump over his next opponent, grabbing him by the head against his shoulder and then performed a centrifugal flip, throwing into one of the mist ninja. Kakashi quickly turned around to block an overhead kunai then instantly moved in a blur to appear from behind and slash his back wide open. Several more mist ninjas charged at Kakashi in an attempt to rush, however the silver-haired Kanoha ninja leapt into the air and stomping on their heads as footstools with enough force to send their faces to the ground. Kakashi landed on the other side then took an IAI stance with the dragon sword positioned behind him as energy began gathering at the blade with a low humming sound, the moment the fallen mist ninjas stood back up was when he made his move, hey straight slash. He moved at blurring speeds to appear right behind the group with the dragon sword held in front of him as their heads rolled right off their shoulders before flicking the blood off the blade. Kakashi dashed towards his next target whilst deflecting any incoming shuriken and kunai that was aimed at him and was soon upon one of the first with a jumping uppercut, sending both skywards. Kakashi slashed the opponent consecutively then grabbed him as they both went spiraling towards the ground in a spinning pile driver driving the enemy headfirst into the ground with enough brute force to create a powerful shockwave which any missed ninjas nearby. Kakashi flipped back onto his feet and began taking evasive action upon the recovered missed ninjas launching water jutsus at him, he capitalized on an opening with help of his Sharingan and switched back to the offensive, flying swallow, he jumped into the air and propelled himself forward to take off several heads with a lightning fast slash across the field. Suddenly Kakashi was enveloped in a blood-red aura then he actually disappeared from their sight only to reappear in front of one of the loyalists and launched a high-speed barrage of lethal slashes resulting in dismemberment before blinking to another and repeating the process before moments later he found himself standing in the middle of dismembered corpses. Kakashi let out a sigh. They could have lived better lives that I best find Kitsune and help end all this once and for all, he took to the trees to regroup with his platoon before fighting their way towards where the Mizukage would be located. Next was Guy who's really taking it to the field with the Mist Ninjas thanks to his high-tier Taijutsu skills. As of now, he was rapidly punching at enemies with overbearing strength to send them flying away then quickly spun round to knock back several more with a jumping roundhouse kick before performing a backflip to retake his strong fist stance. What's with this guy? He's taking us down with just taijutsu and has never once used ninjutsu, one of the loyalists yelled in frustration. Hold on a minute, I recognize him. He's Might Guy, Kanoha's master of taijutsu, said another with growing fear. Guy did his good guy pose with a sparkly smile, and let's not forget that I'm also Kanoha's green beast of prey. I'm here to aid in defeating your most unyouthful kage as well as display my power of youth. Here I come. With blinding speed, Guy appeared in front of a mist ninja while in midair, leaf great flash, he unleashed a powerful lateral kick while aiming at the head to send him flying away, he landed on one foot and started spinning rapidly, leaf gust, then he lashed out with a rotative high kick for a radial attack upon multiple enemies. Guy stopped spinning to jump and land on a handstand with his legs outstretched, leaf coiling wind, he spun with twice the speed earlier to form a mini tornado which blew all surrounding enemies away. Guy was about to continue with the assault when he heard Kakashi call out to him telepathically. Guy, can you hear me? asked Kakashi. Loud and clear, my eternal rival. Guy replied cheerfully, 
one could tell Kakashi was sweat dropping at the other side, so what ails you? I'm currently fighting my way through the mist ninjas to catch up with Kitsune, apparently he's making a beeline towards the Mizukage so I need you to hurry over before any danger befalls him, no problem. The green beast will be there in no time flat, if not I'll run a hundred laps around the village on my hands while strapped to a cart full of weights. Dot just hurry, said Kakashi before cutting off the link. Guy held out his hand to look at the ring, now to see what weapon appear to empower my flames of youth. Equip, with a flash of light, Guy found himself wearing those gloves which he recalled Naruto using during the Chunin exams against as it ignited in flames and a tongue of flame appearing on his forehead as a rather unnerving calm look came over Guy's face, now to show you that my flames of youth can still burn even when calm, with that said, he rushed in to attack the mist ninjas with fiery punches to inflict second-degree burns upon their bodies. Guy pointed his palms towards the ground and shot jets of flames to propel himself skywards to evade some water jutsus burning dynamic action, he came. Diving back down in series of somersaults all the while punching and kicking the loyalists along the way. Guy took to the air once more then and dove back down, stream, he rapidly began to circle around them from the bottom to the top with flames trailing behind until they're completely covered with spiraling flames. He landed nearby and waited for the flames to die down to reveal charred bodies of the mist ninjas. A jounin appeared from behind and sped through a set of hand signs before calling out, water style, giant vortex jutsu. A massive wave of water rose from several nearby lakes and raced towards Guy who was as calm as ever. He stood sideways with an open palm pointed towards the incoming wave and the other pointed in the opposite direction as the gloves began to emit an intense amount of heat before calling out, X burner, one palm shot out a small blast of fire but the other unleashed a massive blaze which instantly pierced through the wave and incinerated the mist ninja, and now to regroup with Kakashi and Kitsune. He shot jets of fire from the gloves to propel himself to the air as he took off in direction of either ninjas. Back with Naruto, he was taking down as much mist ninjas as he could, but he hadn't emerged and scathed out of the battles as gashes could be seen and there are a few cracks to be seen on the ANBU mask. At the moment he was engaging a group in multiple combat as he ducked and weaved before retaliating with kicks and shots from either ebony or ivory to simply bludgeoning them hard with said firearms. Here comes the equalizer. Patented by Deadpool Sensei, and as his awesome student, I get to use it on you schnooks, he began to take different postures and rapidly switching through them as he opened fire on the surrounding enemies, killing them. Naruto retook his stance albeit panting slightly from minor fatigue after multiple enemies, these guys keep on getting in my way, I've gotta push through, but you're supposed to wait for Kakashi and the others to regroup with you before moving to engage Yagura, said Kurama. Maybe so but the enemy has seen Naratosuma to be a serious threat and are placing their focus into killing him. Also the use of your chakra would alert any of his true identity, said Chinami. Plus I can't afford to tucker myself out before the big boss battle, thought Naruto, they'll have to catch up with me, fine, just don't take any unnecessary risk, Kurama let out a sigh. Naratosuma, may I suggest using a Cayman Rider? It should help you gain an advantage in the battle. Just be careful as this one's is rather different from the first, said Chinami. I'll take what I can get, thanks for the heads up though, thought Naruto, rebellion along with ebony and ivory disappeared then the bracelet let out a bright flash of light before fading to reveal a strange looking belt strapped to his waist which has an empty storage bay in the middle of the buckle with a blade-like switch to the right and a display board on the left hand side. Naruto also noticed that he was holding some sort padlock with an embossed design of an orange. He felt information of these tools flow into his mind and smirked behind his mask in anticipation. Time for a little test run. Naruto pressed a switch on the side of the lock seed for the shackle to open up as the Sengoku driver called. Orange, suddenly there was a loud zipping sound and everyone looked up to see a dimensional gap as something which appears to be a large metallic orange descended from it, Naruto inserted the lock seed into the bay and pushed down the lock to secure it, lock on. Henshin. 
Naruto called out before pressing the blade knife down to cut open the lock seed, Soya. The metallic orange landed on his shoulder before a blue and yellow bodysuit materialized around him then disassembled to form a chest plate and pauldrons as well as revealing a helmet in place and a sword with the blade looking like a slice of an orange and there's a modded katana holstered to his waist. All in all, Naruto now resembles an orange-based Japanese samurai, orange arms, Hanamichi on stage. Music start, Kamen Rider game OST, just live more Naruto slung the data Meru on his shoulder as he took a horse stance, this is my stage now, he chanted the catchphrase of the original owner before dashing to re-engage the enemy. Naruto constantly clashed blades with the opposition as he parried a strike then countering with a powerful hook to the face of one then dashing to the side in time to avoid a volley of shuriken, he unsheathed the muso saber and pulled a small lever on the hilt before taking aim and pulling the trigger to fire three rounds of bullets to take him down, I'm gonna slice y'all up into a fruit salad, with the muso saber now drawn out. Naruto attacked with twice the ferocity, parrying strikes then. Countering them with his own. Naruto ducked under a swing from a kanabo and lashed out with a high kick to launch the mist ninja into the air, then he somersaulted after him to execute an aerial cross slash before landing back on the ground, he looked around to see that several more mist ninjas had surrounded him with weapons drawn to attack, there may be strength in numbers dot which only works in my case, he pressed the cutting blade on the driver down once. Orange Squash the Data Mera's blade glowed as it began to charge with orange energy then Naruto performed a 360 degree spin slash to cut down all of the enemies with one hit, I'm not done with you yet. Naruto held out the Muzo Saber and the Data Meru and combined them to form the Najinata mode as he twirled it around like a staff, he proceeded to launch radial attacks with the fused blades as he performed a low sweeping kick to knock one off his feet then vaulting off the weapon to stomp his midsection driving him deeper into the ground then he performed a handless cartwheel to the side to evade an incoming water jutsu then. Charging in a zigzag pattern to execute five hit combo to take him out. Naruto detached the orange lock seed from the buckle and inserted it into the bay of the muso saber as the sengoku driver called out. Lock on. 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. The Muso Saber end charged up with orange energy as Naruto swung it several times to energy slashes at the enemies, trapping them in large orange energy spheres, he then changed stances with the Data Meru's blade end charging with energy as well, it's over. Orange Charge He then dashed towards them and slashed through all of the orange spheres in half, resulting in a chain of explosions and him finally getting some breathing space. Naruto-kun, I can sense Isabu's chakra further ahead of us, said Kurama. Okay then, time for a gunboat diplomacy, putting away his weapons, Naruto reached to the lock seed holder and took out a lock seed with an embossed design of a Sakura petal. He pushed a button on the side to unlock its shackle as he tossed it ahead for the lock seed to suddenly transform into a dirt bike with a Sakura motif, Naruto hopped on and revved the engine before taking off at high speed whilst popping a wheelie along the way music end at another part of the battle. Yagura sat alone in the grassy field in a size of position his club laying next to him as he meditated. Suddenly he heard a strange sound which is unfamiliar to him and apparently was drawing closer to his position. He opened his eyes to see something flying out from the trees and landing on the ground then sliding to a stop before him. It was an armored samurai riding on some sort of metallic contraption with wheels attached to it. The samurai got off the machine and Yugura was mildly surprised when he saw it fold up into a small padlock before landing in the warrior's hand. So dot you must be one of the people who were recruited by the rebels to fight against me, said Yugura as he got up to his feet with the club in hand. Naruto put away the lock seed then drew out the Data Meru, you guessed right although I have my personal reasons for wanting to help take you down, and what would that be? Yagura took a fighting stance. I'll tell you dot when you have ten seconds of your life left. I'll crush you, then those with dirty blood are next. Both warriors dashed towards each other and clashed in the middle with their sword and club, marking the beginning of a fierce battle between Jinchuriki. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, 
and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.